All right. Uh, so yeah, we're live. Um, doing a little bit something different with the uh, setup this time. Uh, we're gonna put um, just the chat on the right hand side, just because I'm gonna be changing the team a lot, and I don't want to have to keep fiddling with it. Um, I'll eventually put the team back together um, on the right hand side, but until then, you know, we'll uh, we'll do that. Uh, so welcome back to the stream, everybody. Uh, where we last left off, we were actually. Well, we were doing other stuff. Um, we were grinding, we caught a, where we got a Scrafty, and uh, yeah, so we, we, we did a few things. Um, so off screen, uh, I did a little bit of EV training. Um, so we'll probably continue a bit more of that, a bit more leveling as well. Um, and then from there, we'll kind of maybe discuss, uh, you know, team comps, things like that, um, as we prep for our trainer battle. Um, additionally, um, in just a moment here, I'm going to be uh, jumping into chat with uh, my good buddy Shin Fitz, as well as uh, my buddy Hans. Um, Shin Fitz himself is actually streaming uh, right now, so um, don't leave this one, but uh, in the future, if you do want to shoot him a follow, I, I know that he'd really appreciate it, and I would too. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and jump in chat, and uh, we'll do some grinding and chill out for the evening. So yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm back. Oh my gosh. What? Are you winning? Okay, I don't understand this stage or this character. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I should have said enjoy the show. So I'm pretty thrilled to, to announce that I've officially have the... Uh, EV items for each of the each of the stats now. What? Yo, I'm so confused. Did you get? Oh, what game are you playing? Actually, I'm trying to find you guys on Twitch. Actually, if I you look for the... Shinfits, you'll find me. Okay, so that's the one that's streaming. Well, I, I I like the interface of Twitch. It's really nice. It's um, I posted mine as well. Um, Hans, oh, if you, you. want to watch. Um, Wait, um, I, um, make sure I followed you, because I'm pretty sure I, I pressed your follow button. Yep, I did see that. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, anytime. And wait, sweet. Um, I want to make sure you get your viewership up. Do you, you want me to run your video, like, for the wa sure. watch rate? Because I'll do that for you. Yeah, absolutely. Although, technically, it, it's, uh, you know, you're allowed to lurk, so. Oh, okay. You're allowed to lurk? <laughs> yeah. You're allowed to lurk, but according to Twitch policy, you're not allowed to, like, trade follows for follows. So, like, for instance, uh, like, I can't go to, to like, Shin and say, hey, Shin Fitz, how about this? How about while we're streaming, I'll lurk in your stream and you lurk in mine at the same time. And that way we'll both get two people. Wow, so Twitch would know. It's against their user policy. Um, uh, that makes sense. But you're allowed to lurk as much as you want. So... And again, it's it's only against the rules. I think if it's like can, if there's some sort of, some it's evidence. Agreement. Yeah, if there's some evidence that you're doing it, like that there's some agreement or whatever. Um, you know, obviously, if you just want to, you know, do your thing, you can do your thing. I do like doing things. So, but I'm really excited. I finished EV training uh, a couple of Pokemon, so I'm probably oh, just gonna keep leveling them up. Did you decide who you want to who you want to use for your team? Um, long so long term, I'm I'm thinking of maybe doing some sort of light sandstorm team. Um, okay. Just because I have like a couple of different Pokemon that work well with sandstorm, and I have a Hippowdon that I can that I can use that gets that has sandstream. Oh, nice. Okay. So um, I may end up going to find a new Hippowdon, or maybe breeding a better one. Um. Uh, so we'll we'll kind of see. <laughs> Um, but the current one that I have is not bad. It has a neutral nature. So I'll probably just end up level EV training this thing. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. But right now I have a, a Doug Trio that's um, naive. So minus special attack, I think, and plus speed. And plus speed, that works. Yeah, and it's, mm. you know, speed and attack but EVs. Doug, Doug Trio is a real um, glass cannon. Like, that is just... That's all it does, yeah. Hit hard and, yeah. Wow, this is giving me nostalgia. Like, it's basically Super Mario 3. Well, now Super Mario 1. Oh, now. 8? Yeah, isn't that cool? Oh, yeah. This game. Cool. 
this game is just a celebration of Nintendo. Like, all the Nintendo songs and stages and whatnot that are in this game is ridiculous. Yeah, referring specifically to Smash Ultimate, uh, for um, those who are watching would, my stream. <laughs> would, you, uh, would you agree, Owen, that Nintendo is one of the companies that are not taking advantage of, not abusing the goodwill of their fan base? Like, they're actually basically respecting them? It no, like they've been, not at all. No, so they're no, milking. They they literally just filed. Did they literally just file a lawsuit in order to stop people from playing GameCube online? <laughs> like, yeah. Like they filed a cease and desist. I would say, if anything, they they delivered the. Oh, you can not not all. Not. Actually, Tommy has a Switch, and he twitches Malay on his GameCube. That's right. It has that functionality. I totally forgot about no, that. It doesn't. It doesn't. Someone created. Wait. That. Oh. Then well, technically, oh, Fantasy Star you? Online. <laughs> maybe I'm thinking about. Wait, maybe I'm thinking. Wow, I'm thinking about Dreamcast. Hmm. Yeah, I got my consoles all all, all confused. I like the uh, controller of Dreamcast. I have to admit, it's it's very nice. Yeah, but it it's. I don't think I've ever actually played a ton of Dreamcast. If I'm being totally honest. Yeah, same here. Yeah, it, it 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 was it was ahead of the curve. Like I remember, um, I remember Kyle playing um, Power Stone. I think. Oh, and... Power Stone is amazing. Yeah, that game is expensive. Like, uh, um, yeah. if you try to get it now, you know, for your like uh, vintage uh, game, not GameCube, Dreamcast collection. That in the in the Street Fighter game. Oh, last bit of info by the way. I did want to announce that my Doug Trio is a shiny Doug Trio that also has like a, a decent nature and a ZV train. So you know that's a plus. Mm. So, <laughs> the fact that it's shiny, I, I agree. That is a plus. And I have a Lunatone as well. This Kabutops is taking me to town. KGB Bunny. That guy's always in your stream, isn't he? That's Bobby. Ah, oh, Bobby. That's right. I, you know what? And I, I specifically asked, is that Bobby last stream? Yeah. He said yes. Yeah. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Oh yeah, and I have this ponytail that I that I'm gonna be using as well. Which is gonna be fun. Oh my gosh, Sephiroth die. <laughs> the horizontal range. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's his hitbox is stupid. It's like what if we took Marth and just made it wor and just made it worse for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Just starting off the new generation of my tribe with some monkey, hanky panky, and ancestors. <laughs> oh, Lord of mercy on us. Uh, do you know what I used to be watching? Um, like, um, us, um, melee YouTubers talking about melee, you know, and then them oh, yeah. commenting on the current meta versus. Uh, there was one point where Diddy Kong was like super broken. I don't think Diddy Kong was in Malay. No, no, I know, I know. Wait, About the um. No. No, no, he, he was wasn't. In Brawl. Yes, Brawl, Man. and there was another one. Oh shoot! You know, um, kind of sh shifting gears real quick. That um, the videos that I have from Comic Connection. Mm -hmm. There's one that I have with all of us arguing about Zoids. Oh. Oh man, that that takes me back. Yeah. Zoids. Yeah, and I, I can't find it. I I I know I have it recorded, but it's like Danny Robles. Um. I think I vaguely recall this conversation. Yeah, about like Zoids and which Zoid is the best and whatnot. Yeah. Oh, you mean like Power Ranger Zoids? No, oh, not man. Zords. Zoids. Oh. Oh, as in like Chaotic Century and 
and yeah, Bitcloud yeah, yeah, yeah. and oh. and all that. No, knowing my edge lord teenage self, I'm certain that I that was arguing the Berserk Fury was best. Oh uh, wow! Yeah, I know what you are. You're edge lord. <laughs> edge lord. Yeah, Owen. Back in the day, if Sephiroth was in Smash, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, it would have been over. I, I'd literally Sephiroth, have the console already. You could Sephiroth. You could, so you could play Sephiroth and Brawly, like his your top two characters. It felt like. Yeah, yeah, I'd say oh, so. Really? As you can tell, I, I was very much, uh, I was very much into you know deep and nuanced characters, oh, even as a young child. Is Fissure a good move? I feel like it's not. <laughs> I mean, it depends. It feels like that game has a lot of, like, what <laughs> happened. I feel like that game has a lot of a, um... Where I just oh, have I to throw it out like a Hail Mary. <laughs> like buffed up Pokemon? Yeah. Where there's really no way to beat them other than a one-hit KO? Man. does Do you always go second when you use Fissure, though? I think with all one hit KO moves, you always go second. They're, yeah, they're minus, they're minus like two priority or something. Yeah, which means it's basically it's worthless on a Doug Trio. Not good on Doug Trio, <laughs> yeah, because its defenses are terrible. But man, imagine if I flip heads the one time. Why does Sock have sturdy? <laughs> Why is Sock sturdy? Because people use them. It's unacceptable. Well, this is like a dream come true. Sephiroth versus Link. Man, we could do. I could do. Seph, you could do Sephiroth versus Ganondorf in this game, which is a matchup I've spoken about for decades. I basically just designed an entire card game in order to do just that. Yeah. But he's there. <laughs> or you can do Sephiroth versus. Cloud in a fighting game. I mean, oh, his I think sword they, is... they kind of already had that. Yeah, his sword is so long. Isn't that ridiculous? Can do Sephiroth versus Mario. I know, right? It's like Sephiroth some weird parody of itself. You can do Sephiroth versus Ryu. <laughs> you can do Sephiroth versus the entire roster of Super Smash Brothers, <laughs> the original one. Hey, welcome in, Panda. We're just, uh, grinding some cash, because I'm broke, oh. and, uh, chilling with my, my buddy Hans and Shinfits here. Heck yeah. I'm the odd man. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a dinosaur when it comes to video games. I've been, I've been, I've been out of the market for a long time. I, mean, I don't even know which, which game this is. <laughs> uh, well, this is Pokemon Reborn, which is a fan game. What? This game you're playing right now? Yes. This is a ah, fan made game. Wait, but this looks like Smash. Well, no, you're oh, watching, watching Shinfits. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. How are you playing two different games at the same Oh, my goodness. This is no, confusing. Owen is, is <laughs> streaming, and I'm streaming. We're both, we're, streaming. we're both streaming two separate games. Yeah. Different channels. Wait, so Fitzroy is fighting someone else that's not Owen. Yes. And, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Like, this guy I'm fighting, this is not Owen. Oh, because that was... That's pretty funny. Know, he lo <laughs> I guess yeah, he just assumed it was you because it's Sephiroth. That, that's... I mean, that tracks. It does track. I mean, I, I don't blame you. And you're playing... What game are you playing, Owen? I am playing Pokemon Reborn. Pokemon. Reborn. Oh, okay. Um, wow, oh, that is crazy. Awesome. But Discord, it's kind of cool that we can all be in the same chat. Oh man, you yeah, killed me the yeah. same way twice. Yeah, because uh, Discord uh, synergized very well with Twitch. Yeah. I'm oh man, bus bus business people love that, that word synergy. Oh well, yes, yes they do. <laughs> you, know. you say synergy so just one time? So does the Lonely Island. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I, because I, I'm a manager of a 15k and up Discord right now, so it, it's getting kind of, it's getting kind of crazy. 
just just throw some some business buzzwords in there. You'll have them wrapped around your finger. Oh, I already have them wrapped around. <laughs> I already have them wrapped around my finger already because it's fifteen k. Okay, because what are they gonna do? Trying to get rid of them. Well, I've yeah, I've constantly get rid of them and banned. Oh my god, I'm a it's because Hans. Moderator. It's because Hans rules with an iron fist. <laughs> oh my god, like I'm a. I can't believe I'm, I'm a Discord moderator. I never wanted this. <laughs> Can you not like I give up? <laughs> I know, I no, I, and it actually is pretty cool. I'm really given responsibility to manage it. Wow. Um, is Giga Impact a good move? I feel like it's not. Giga Impact. Yeah. I, mean, I guess if you want to just like, wow. Just hit the one thing. Yeah. If you know you're gonna die next turn and you just need like power. Power and more. Oh, looks like I got prime loot. Alright, I'm gonna oh, temporarily no, teach strength to this pony too. Wow. Yeah, I don't want none no part of that. Take a fire spin, I think. <laughs> Why can't Bissimian learn freaking strength? This is a travesty. That's some, some straight nonsense. How can he block after that? Are you getting wrecked? Oh, well, Sephiroth he... is beating me up pretty bad. Well, he is, <laughs> well, he is short shirtless Sephiroth. So, oh, it's the one without the shirt? Yeah, it's over. Yeah, he, it's he's, over? Every, he's every 12-year-old girl's dream. <laughs> what? I mean, as it happens, he, he was in the dreams of a 12-year-old boy as well. Oh, yeah, actually, no, I think <laughs> boys will be more hyped with a shirtless Seth Roth than girls would. I mean, I was referring to Cloud specifically, but... Oh, yeah, that's right, Cloud. Oh, man, this Jeez, is weird. Louise. I mean, I assume he was, like, what? 15 or something, 17, when he was, you know, watched his entire family get killed. Oh, yeah. Man, anime back in the day was, was different. It was super edgy. Just hit different. Like, it's why? still edgy. Don't don't misunderstand. It was like... like don't even... Rel <laughs> relatives were dying left and right. Have you not heard of the... of our lord and savior, Anos? Voldigold? <laughs> And what could only be described as the most ridiculous, overpowered main character that you could ever hope Wait, for. Who? Anos Voldigold, or whatever. I forgot the, the fucking that? anime, but basically it's like the, the reborn demon king in his own universe. It's kind of ridiculous. In the first episode, it's very quickly established that there is no situation where he doesn't win. And, you know, I guess that's... What? <laughs> <laughs> There's no situation that he doesn't win? Yeah, basically. It's a power fantasy, basically. It, it is exactly that. I think words that he actually utters is, do you really think that killing me would be enough to, to defeat me? <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's horrible writing. You know it's so he... good. <laughs> that, that's so bad writing. It's, it's so good. It's terrible. It's so nice. good. I have to find I have to find a quote. Hold on. There's gotta be somewhere that's that, that sounds like fan fiction right there. Yeah. Like, oh it's bad. Can never lose. It, it's exactly speaking that. Of, speaking of fan fiction, do you guys have any opinions about Game of Thrones? I, I mean who doesn't have opinions well, about, about Game of Thrones? What, what what do you think about the last season? Um, it was not its strongest. Okay. I mean, I was okay with it. I, I think I think they made some mistakes writing wise. Mm -hmm. Well, in my opinion, wow. I think it I, I think it all went to hell around season five. Like that's where everything <laughs> started to go bad. In my I opinion. mean, for me, I think I think it went it started to go downhill when they brought Jon Snow back. Like the moment they established that death was like they could bring people back from death. Yes. I didn't. I, I started to check out. Say goodbye to your stakes. Well, you know, from the books, they they lay down better cases of him coming 
of him possibly coming. Well, it, it's not. Why? It's not because of Lady Stoneheart. No, no. Well, one, yeah, that, and two, his um link with um um with his um dire wolf because they're because the Starks are all well. The Starks yeah, are they, technically wards, technically yeah, all, in the books. Pretty much. Yeah, in yeah. the books. Uh, but the books, Winds of Winter is not out yet, so we really don't know if he comes back. You know, so what did he die at the end of the last one? Yeah, he got stabbed. Oh, oh man, I hope he dies. Yeah, screw Jon Snow. Well, Jon Snow in the books were was 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 more intelligent. Well, he was portrayed more intelligent in the books than he was in the show. He had he had a lot more. I think my character. biggest my biggest problem with it. Um, I think my biggest issue with um, with the writing is just the oh good it still gives defense. Sorry, I was like trying to figure out something. Mm -hmm. Um, I think my biggest issue with the writing has a lot to do with just like the poor characterization of a lot of the characters. In in my personal opinion, like I, I think that like a lot of characters uh, were kind of mishandled. Daenerys, in particular, was very really mishandled in that final season. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, she was. And it's like if you want if you want her to go crazy, I'm down for that. Yeah, just set it up, please. Just like do me a yeah, solid exactly. and foreshadow it at all. Yeah, exactly. Hold on one second here. I'm going to have you guys background, but we'll be muted. Make sure to tag me in Facebook Posty. <laughs> yeah, I got you, man. Don't, don't worry about it. Who was that text? Yes, it was. Yeah. I mean, when I post this video to YouTube, I'll definitely put him in the description. Indeed. Which that reminds me, I haven't checked my comments on that lately. I have one person that, uh, at least one person who religiously checks out the videos, which, you know, dude, I really appreciate you. I know you're going to be watching this at some point, so, like, keep it up. I really appreciate it. You keep me going. <laughs> have you thought of maybe, you know, with the um, attention span of people nowadays, have you thought of maybe cutting it down to, like, the best 10 minutes? Yeah, um, I actually have thought about that, um... And I think, like, because I was, because during the last stream, actually, I think um, my buddy uh, Bast uh, Bastion brought this up, where, like, for the streams where I'm just doing, like, this, like, just, like, grinding and, and EV training or whatever, if I'm not progressing the story necessarily, um, I really should just probably cut it out, either not even upload it to YouTube or just cut it down to whatever the best conversation bits are. Um, and I think that that's what I'm going to do. Um or I, I may end up doing that going forward at some point. Um, just like, um, if I don't have like a decent conversation that evening, I just might not upload it at all. Yeah, I think that's, that works. Oh my gosh. Oh, excuse me. But yeah, I think that, um, um, oh yeah, that has an Everstone on it. But yeah, I think for me, like, Game of Thrones, like, that's a big part of why I didn't like that final season all that much, um, was a lot of the characterization. Um, I didn't like how they handled, um, oh god, I can't even remember her freaking name now. Um, oh, Sansa? Not Sansa. I liked Sansa, actually. Um, Arya? Arya, yeah. They, they did not utilize Arya very well either. Really? I don't think so. Like, they had, like, multiple seasons where she was learning how to be a faceless man and then just, like, never utilized that power or, like, used it one time. Mm, yeah, I mean, I mean, but how could she use it against the army of the dead? You, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I don't know, transform into one of the undead and then, you know, use that to get close. I don't know. Like, I think that there were other options that could have been utilized to really, like, really kind of show, uh, showcase, like, that training. I don't know. I would have liked to have I seen mean, it used more. I, I guess, but I, I, at the same time, it's like, how, how over, how much more over can Arya get? I mean... 
Listen, I, I think that Arya deserved better than what she got. What? She killed the Night King? She basically... Um, but it wasn't earned, so it didn't mean anything. I mean, I'm I'm really happy that she did kill the entire Frey family. That made me feel good on the inside. It made me feel a yeah, thing. Yeah, like complete genocide of a... I, I don't think genocide is a word, but... Uh, no, no, I think it definitely counts. Okay. Yeah, the whole the the whole clan is pretty much dead. Yeah, like how many um, feet? How many more feats does Arya need? I just want I think, the. I think the problem it, with Arya. I just want the feats that she actually does do to be like you know, cooler. I guess she I, I don't turned know. Into, she turned into super assassin, and in the Game of Thrones universe, it was kind of, it was kind of like it's not threw me out of the immersion of the whole story because it's like huh this is not gritty real anymore i know a show about dragons and magic i know no, but I, I, com I completely agree if she is just like able to get in close to someone and kill them i understand but the fact that she was going toe to toe with brianne in a fight i was like what <laughs> yeah because that's not what realistic especially especially people who understand fighting like brianne had reach and weight over her and that's a huge difference in a real fight and experience Which, also like she's wearing metal also wasn't she wearing plate armor <laughs> like brienne is a tank basically <laughs> she's a literal tank she's a tank like she, and, and, and they've, been, the they've, been putting, they've been putting over the hound for so long and she beat the hound by herself crushed yeah. him it was well, I wouldn't say crushed him. It, it, it was it was a struggle. It was with it, a, it was a struggle. Like, <laughs> no, didn't he literally get crushed? Yeah, like, I think he was even fell, holding back to be honest. Yeah, yeah, he fell. But that that fight was pretty gruesome. It, that was the best. That was one of the best fights I've seen on on there. Um, okay. let me ask you a question. And since you know a lot mm -hmm. about the books, this is gonna be even. Even more cool. Um, I know basically nothing about the book, so I, I'm prepared okay. to deliver hot take after hot take. Okay. Maybe, okay. Who would you say is the best fighter in Westeros? Oh well, what? Oh, that's it. It has to, well, okay. Well, okay. If we're consider, if we're putting dead people on the table, right. it's 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 oh man, it's 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 a toss up between Oberyn and 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 um and um. Arthur Dane? Uh, um, God, it. Uh, he has the sword called Don. I keep on. Yeah, Arthur Dane, the sword of the Ar morning. Yeah, Arthur Dane, the sword of the morning. But I have to give it to Oberyn because Oberyn, Oberyn is a re is a very realistic fighter. You know, he's a very realistic fighter, and he would do dirty shit to Arthur Dane. But Don is no joke. Like Don is a serious um um tiebreaker. Because him and Barristan, I mean, his dual wielding was, <laughs> was yeah, but but he he never dual wield in the in the books. He um because um Dawn is well, we don't a, we don't see we don't really we only hear accounts of him talking. We don't really they don't really yeah, like, explain how he fights. Well, yeah, they didn't explain how he fights, but they did describe the sword that he actually uses in battle, and it's a two handed sword. Yeah, it's a two. -handed so he wouldn't be dual wielding with that and a huge gigantic well, maybe sword. Maybe he's as strong as the mountain. We well, he's very skilled. He's a very just cleave fighter. a dude in half just the one time. Yeah, like, like Arthur Dane was the only reason why he was able to be so chivalrous and honorable is because he was just so freakishly good that he didn't need to do it. just an extremely good swordsman. But I'm really glad that you clarified that it was his game. combat ability that was good and not his character. Because, <laughs> no, like, like, if anything, I think like it's been made clear that uh, people in people in the Westeros well, in the Game of Thrones universe do not get by for being good people. Well, it feels almost like a, a thesis guy, statement. <laughs> but the reason why he was allowed to be a good guy was because he was so formidable and 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 deadly. Like, like his combat prowess allowed him. To be good. The reason why he's so good as a person was because Owen. he Owen, was so the deadly. The yeah. guy that we're talking about, you've actually seen in the show. He's um, he's the guy that we see at the Tower of Joy, where everyone, okay. where everyone always said that um, that 
Eddard beat him in single combat, but really he didn't. His friend yeah, he stabbed did. him from behind. Right, right. Yes. Yeah, and that's uh, um, Arthur Bane. Cool, we see him for like 30 seconds in the show. Yeah, and, but he wrecked like three people by himself. Yeah. No, like five <laughs> people by himself. Well, yeah, he, he, he basically was, uh, was a killing machine. Like, Yeah, it was like, like Death Blow. Okay. Yeah. Perry, Death Blow. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. In, yeah, he was um, insane. Um, but um, he's also he had a he had a good um, integral compass. He was friends with Rhaegar Targaryen, so he was very. Actually, the whole fact that one of the people, what people would speculate is that the reason why they lost the battle in the Trident is because he wasn't there to back up uh, Rhaegar. Please, you know the real reason is is freaking. Robert Baratheon. Oh, okay, okay. A, Rob, a oh, okay. And oh, oh, okay. Honorable mention. Uh, um, Robert Baratheon would basically be there. Like Robert, Robert Baratheon. It's a beast. Like he was ridiculous. Like Robert could beat the mountain <laughs> in his prime. Robert yeah, in his Robert prime was disgusting. Would, man. would would destroy the mountain. Like because like he was just he was not a tank. He was a war machine. Man did love his alcohol, though. Yes, he oh, did. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Or was a war machine. Oh, but you. I would say Oberyn. Yeah, Oberyn, Arthur Dane, and Robert. Those, those are the top three. I just think it's kind of crazy how, like, the final season was so bad that, like, the show basically disappeared from, like, the cultural zeitgeist overnight. Yeah, did, that's did crazy. It? Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was like, it, like, it never I happened. About this, about how during the pandemic it's prime view like it's a it's a prime show to watch like during a during a um, pandemic and just like no one watched it i mean like wow. i'm gonna be honest really? like i have a really hard time like like i would never recommend that show really i, I can't I, I feel like the first like five seasons are so strong like i i really like watching those old episodes you know yeah. what it is is that the, the ending was so bad that it cut that it, it retroactively makes it these painful. stuff before it shit is what it happens because it's not know, like dexter you know how right bad it is. no it's not like fucking dexter where like dexter you can watch just the first four seasons and be satisfied with it and then not have to worry about anything else because yeah. it's it's self-contained enough you don't need to know what happens next yeah but with game of thrones the, the ending was so bad that it retroactively made all of the build-up prior to that significantly worse than what it was on its own. If the show had just oh been cancelled at the end of the fifth season, no. I, I would have I, to I agree with that, like, because... I don't feel like, like it, it disregards how good the uh, beginning was. Well, it makes it know, much but, worse. But, I'm not saying it wasn't good still, but I think it makes it significantly worse. Well, like, 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 cause, 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 why would it make Game anything Thrones, worse? I'll, I'll explain, because Game of Thrones was built over time like it was it was a well-crafted uh story woven into into oh boy that, that those, those are that's a really high praise well-crafted <laughs> well, the, yeah, the, the first, first several the seasons first, were were, were well-crafted the first four in my opinion I, the fifth is where it all started to fall apart um the first four was was well-crafted but the payoff was just so bad. Was actually we got we got dick slapped in the face. Like literally, <laughs> wow. <laughs> dick slapped in the face. I mean, I <laughs> we, like like we got dick slapped because the Night King. He was he was I I was like so hyped to, to to see what this guy was going to do. I was like, oh my god, this guy is like ice walking. Like, oh my god. He's as it American. turns out, he as it turns out, he was a pretty good uh, pretty good knife block. <laughs> Like he was pretty good, and then, and then I'm sorry. Like Jon Snow, Keith Harrison was salty. I know that guy wanted to kill the Night King. I know he knew he was supposed to fight him, but Dave and Dan had some issue with him, and they just took it out on him by just making Arya take him out because it was so obvious they had issues with that guy. No, I think what the issue is that I think the issue is that the two showrunners wanted to move on to another project, and so well, they opted to just wrap it up as quickly as possible without actually trying to make it good. Well, not only that, I agree with you on that, but they also want to put salt in the wound and just say, hey, Keith, you're not fighting the Night King. We're going to let Arya take it <laughs> because we don't like you for some strange reason. I mean, Peace I, don't out. Going to Star Wars. I don't see why that would be an issue for an actor. No, because like if you're spending so many years like playing a role and you're like, oh, all right, I get to fight the cool bad guy and like maybe kill him. And then you're not, oh, no, we're just going to make you an extra, even though you're technically the main character of the whole 
I don't think he was the main character. Was he, he was. He was the main character. I, like, I mean, he, like, I don't think he was either, but I think he became the main character. You know, like, he was just, like, everything happened because of him, technically. He brought and, and everyone. To be honest, once we once we found out who, like, once they did the, the, the Tower of Joy episode, everything became focused about Tom, about Jon Snow. It was all, you know, him and Daenerys. Is that all the other stories didn't matter anymore. And that romance was kind of like didn't work. The, the chemistry was kind of off between the act. Like, yeah, it was like I agree. It, it was seeing brothers and sister kiss or like that. Technically, they were they were pretty much related anyway. No, they were related. In the, in the show. <laughs> yeah, they were. Related, yeah, there wasn't yeah, no like probably were, that um, they actually were. They, they were closer to be yeah, to being related were. than than Deborah and Dexter Morgan were at least. And it was still oh, weird when they man, did it too. That's crazy. Yeah, it was still so, even though the actor the actors basically dated in real life. No, they were married um, in real life. Yeah, at least for too. for Dexter and Deborah Morgan, they were married at one point. Yeah, in fact, true. I think they were exes by the time that se- those scenes were shot, which yeah, has got to be especially was. awkward. Um, yeah, super awkward. Deborah still is holding. Uh, Deborah's still not over it. I know she's not, but you know, because yeah. B- based on what? Do you know her personally? Are you friends with Jennifer Carpenter? <laughs> like, what's going on? Did research. Oh, you know, like, uh, just look at the interviews when they bring up like the the tense moments it is to like like be like. There's an interview that she basically breaks up and cries because that was like eight years ago, dude. Like, I'm sure she's over it now. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, hope she is. I hope she is. But uh, that Jon Snow and Daenerys thing good. It didn't. It didn't work out. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it was after um, Michael C. Hall's cancer. She, they got divorced, or like during that, the whole thing. Man, do you guys remember SoulSwap.com? I, I don't think I've ever been to that website. But Hans once tried to sing its praises at Tommy. Wait. Wait, wh- 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 which one? Soul Swap? Yes. Wait, wh- Soul Swap? What was it? Soulswap.com. Soulswap.com. Yeah, I was into a lot of uh, interesting things. Um, niche websites, I would say. Yeah, niche. Actually, I was like seriously contemplating creating like a bread porn website. Like a, a website that focused entirely on just bread performing. Bread? Yeah, cause Wait, I, I thought, yeah, because I thought it would be hilarious to create like a. a, a I'm website. sure that it would. I do just want to throw out there that my my channel is family friendly, so I'm gonna. Wait, are you streaming? On, are you streaming this on your on your stream? Or yes, stream? it's on my oh, we're stream. Still, we're still streaming. Yes, we've oh. been streaming the whole time, and we're going oh, to okay. keep streaming. Oh, okay, that's cool. Well, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say because. <laughs> we we can ju- we say. can just we can just segue off of that and, and not get any more explicit. I think it would be funny for an adult well, audience. Well, hey, you know, when you bring Hans, <laughs> when you bring Hans onto your stream, you got to know it's 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 super X X X. Is it X X? All right, I'm out. Oh, <laughs> I'll jump back in in a minute. We'll just let him sweat a little bit. All right, you missed me. Oh, wait. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I, I, I didn't know we were really streaming. No, I'm, I'm, I'm largely teasing you. But yes, I do want to try and keep it family friendly okay, if I can. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to ruin your um, ranking. I know how I. Sorry about that. It's all right. You're good, man. Yeah, just let me know next time that you're streaming me, because I, I, I wasn't aware. I, I, I did it when I started. I, I said I was jumping off to start the stream. But that's all right. Oh, it's no biggie. I thought, I thought you meant. Sorry about that. But now I realize it was. Twitch streaming. All right, cool. Yep, no reason. Well, anyway, um, Hans, do you? Yes. Um, cool, cool can beans. You, can you like? I guess streaming yes. art, like you drawing. Mhm. Can yes. you just do that on your phone? Mm-hmm. Yes, I can. I have two Probably. phones. I have two phones. Oh, oh man, sick oh. brag. No, I, I have to because <laughs> like I, everyone, everyone calls me a drug dealer because I have two phones as well. Yeah, you know what? People call me drug dealer too, and I kind of felt a way about it. Cause, like maybe it's because the creative. They think they think I'm doing drugs. 
But then I'm like, nah, it's because I have Ooh. a skill. I don't think I can join. Wow! Oh, you're joking? Don't get wrecked. I just did. I just saw the most sick edge guard with a um, mess and a yo yo. I mean, I am a fan of yo yo tech. Uh, but yes, I was thinking about streaming on my phone. Um, yeah, that's what I was doing because um, that, that's one of the reasons why I have I have it. It was like an investment. Like, okay, I'm gonna have one for streaming and one for you know business and stuff like that. So, do you have a Twitch channel set up? Yes, I do actually. But I I was trying see I was trying to figure out what I was going to do because there were so many ideas I had running through my head. I was either gonna do like 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 a channel about drawing. Excuse me, or a channel about caricatures, or a channel about, um, I don't know, something else. You should do both. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is, is just, like, actually starting. Yes, that's exactly. very true. I mean, that's with most things, right? I mean, this is true. But I think that a lot of yeah, people kind of stop themselves from starting by saying like, oh, well, I'll start after I do X thing or after I get Y thing. And it's like, you keep moving the, the goalpost for yourself and it never gets done. Yep. Well, I agree 100%. Well, I've already made the decision that I'm going to create videos, you know, after the clubhouse meeting and so I'm like, okay, yeah, it's Man. 2021. I'm Man, I, I have a cousin who started doing YouTube videos not that long ago, and she, within like a month or two, got to 100k. I'm sorry, to 10k subscribers. Oh, wow. That's still, that's still, that's still good. ridiculous, right? So I was asking her like some tips and whatnot, and she's been um, sending me videos and what she, like, what she did her research on. And I think I sent you one, Owen. Yeah, yeah, you did. Which I haven't watched just yet, but I will. It's on my like on my wait, uh, wait. back catalog. Wait, are we still streaming? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm streaming. <laughs> oh wait, what about you? I I have not stopped the stream. I will I will let you know when I stop the stream, Hans. Everything you say will be recorded for posterity forever on YouTube. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So both of you are streaming. Okay, I have to keep yes. my language. Okay. You know, no, language um, is fine, as long as it's not, like, overly vulgar. Gosh darn it. Okay, gee whiz. <laughs> oh, wow. Really, really coming at me with the with the, the coarse language there. Oh, Chucks. Um, let me see chucks? here. Yeah, all Chucks. <laughs> oh, like Chuck man, Roast. Okay, but I agree with you, Owen. Yeah, um, retroactively... The eighth season kind of ruined the rewatchability of Game of Thrones entirely because the payoff. I, mean, I, I guess was... it's just personal preference, but I don't agree. I, I still think those older episodes are just as good. Yes, they're good, but I kind of feel empathy for torturing the people I'm recommending because I know they will feel the. I've seen the eighth season, and I don't want to well, subject my friends to that. I mean, everything is subjective. I mean, I, uh, I think it's universal that most people did not enjoy that season but i'm pretty sure some people did I, i'm so certain that did. some people did and I, I i've never met those people yet <laughs> i like to see like to, well like again i, I want to be fair right I, I think that um next page p sorry i just read something um to be fair like i'm sure there are some number of people who really did enjoy it and i know that there's obviously a vocal the, the people who are going to be vocal about it on Twitter are not the majority of people who watch the show. There's a ton of people who watch the show and just appreciated it for what it was, right? Um, yeah, there, there's some people who are like, well, it's a sucky ending, but you know, I'm still glad I watched it. I'm still glad I watched it. Yeah, like... I think it's like, I'm not uh, disappointed I'm that honest. I watch it, that I watched it. Like, I'm I'm fine that I did, because I think that, like, at least for the like literary reference, I, I think it's a good thing to have. For me... I think when I look, like, if I'm going to recommend something, I want it to be, I want it to be a, a, a nice experience, I think, from front to back. And I think that when the, the closing experience is, is super negative, I think that that, to me, um, makes it really hard for me to recommend it. It's like if I watch, like, like I kind of equate it to, like, watching an anime, right? Like, if I watch an anime and the first, like, few episodes are really good and then the rest of the show is just kind of meh. You know, or, like, if the first season is pretty good, but, like, the second one is not. 
Actually, I have a really good example, Tokyo Ghoul. The first season of Tokyo Ghoul, I really enjoyed. Second season, not so much. In fact, I dropped it after like three episodes because I, it occurred to me that I didn't know who the characters on screen were who were fighting or why. Um, so for me, I was like, okay, well, I can't recommend Tokyo Ghoul because even though the first season was really good, the second season is unwatchable as far as I'm concerned. And so I can't, in good faith, kind of recommend that show. I see. But um, you can recommend Dexter? Um, I can rec- the first. And Honestly, I don't even really recommend Dexter, but if someone is going to watch it, I would say stop at season four. Yeah, season four is the, basically the, 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 the pinnacle. Like, basically plateaued after that. Um, the eighth season of Game of Thrones, seriously, the whole ending of Game of Thrones seriously bothered me, actually. I literally carried that emotional trauma for, like, two weeks. No lie. Because... I was just breaking down the whole story structure of why they made the decision, and it, it was literally torturing me. I literally had to, like, take a break from watching anything because it was it was so upsetting to me. I mean, it, it was bad, like, but like it was The decision like, that they made. I mean, you, you guys are making it sound like the writing and dialogue and... And acting and everything was terrible. Like, like it's it, a, it was, it was, it was terrible. Like yeah, a, it was, it was, it was terrible comparing it to the like other it's a Zack season. Snyder movie or something. Well, I don't. Well, <laughs> I, don't know. It was like, I mean, it's a sliding scale, it, it, man. I, I, I think the, I think it is a sliding scale. I, I think the, the choices that were made were bad, but the dialogue was still good. The acting was still good. But, you know what I mean? It was. I'll, I'll have to respectfully disagree. It's like this. Okay, th- like this is where we're coming from with Game of Thrones. The, okay, season eight acting storytelling is fine if you were to isolate it as own, but if you're, but this is a series that 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 took multiple years to get to where it is. So it's like you start off eating from 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 Lame Ming Yang, right? And you had a back massage, and you were you know being taken care of, and then gradually over time they just give you dog food, and they tell well, you well, no, well, this is this is the same well, thing you. You eat you you were eating like eight years ago. Like here you here you go. Like no, this is not the same thing. This is dog food. <laughs> it says fillet chunks you know? with gravy right in the can, my yeah, man. Yeah, and then, and then, <laughs> wait, where's my where's my back rub? And then, wait, 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 wait. But hold on. What I'm saying is, where where do we where do we draw the line where where this is done poorly, or this is just not the outcome that I wanted? Oh, okay. I'll answer that question. I'll answer that question right now. Is when characters start completely acting completely different than what they were established. Yeah, I think you when know? you throw out the characterization of the character, like up until that point, I think at that yeah. point, like you can't expect someone to be okay with it. Like for example, Tyrion. Tyrion became a complete failure. Actually, I blame him for Daenerys going crazy. If you want to. No, I, it's it's not. It's completely... not. No, no, let, let's be clear about Ruin something, her. Hans. No, it, Tyrion, let's be clear Tyrion about something. Can't always be correct. Like, Tyrion can't always be right. No, that, that's absolutely yeah, but, true, but, but I want to be clear yeah. about something. It wasn't any character's fault in the show why Daenerys went crazy. It was the writer's decision to make her go crazy, because there's no justification within the show. I, I know, I know, I know, but this is, where I'm, this is the angle I'm okay, taking. Tyrion okay, was but... so bad at his job, at Hand of the Queen, in that season that... I don't blame her for going nuts, cause like, dude, you literally advised me to basically lose this war because all of your advice just led to me losing all He's... my draft. No, but I do agree with Fitz. Losing... Like, he can't always be right. Like, like, what was he thinking? Sending Jon Snow to the wall to get like, okay, let's go get a zombie to show that my sister his plan. Me. That was Jon's plan. No, like no, he 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 um, he co-signed it basically. He co-signed that plan. Say, why don't we send her proof? And then John's like, oh, okay. Like he literally co-signed that. He said that 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 idea is great. Let's go okay, to well, this let me, wilderness. Let me, let, me, let me ask you guys this: How does one? And I I understand this was bad for storytelling. <laughs> I understand it. But how does one go crazy? Like, it, it, is it just one day you're fine and one day you're not? No, I That's don't think that... Um, I, I mean, it depends on who you ask, I guess, right? Because, like, the Joker would tell you it's just one bad day. But, um, but no, yeah, I think that... One move. I, I think that what you're asking, though, isn't really a fair question. Because I think when you're 
what you're talking about is just like okay in an actual story you know in a in a in real life why do people go nuts and the answer is that you know there is no no reason because they're nuts and they don't have to have a reason but i think that that's a fundamentally different question than what actually is 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 is, that we're talking about which is you know someone going crazy in the context of a story and i think that when you're talking about the context of a story you need some sort of build up or foreshadowing to it the the actual method for how the person goes nuts is not really like here nor there there's a lot of different ways you could do it um, but I think the issue is that it wasn't foreshadowed or built up. Because there, there was build up to her going crazy. It wasn't sufficient, I agree. It was only basically that season. But it wasn't, they, they did build up to it. But what I'm trying to say is, okay, it's, it's not how you would have wanted it to go. But that doesn't mean the quality of the show is any worse. I disagree. Because uh, I think the quality worse. was worse. Yeah, the quality was worse. Like even the dialogue, like they they, they 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 were talking as if they were speaking from cue cards or something. It was it was like Well, I wouldn't go that far. I think I think they I think that that's maybe a little bit extreme. But to me, I, I, like I'll go to that extreme cuz it was basically McDonald dialogue. It was it was it was so bad compared to the previous season. It was like, "Hey, you did this. Remember this time when the writing was good? We did this." "Oh, yes, I remember that. How are you?" Like it was really really annoying. This I'm sorry, I'm ranting because that that season really hit me personally. I got wounded in that season. That was so bad. I was hyping that that whole show up so much. No, no. So I think that um, I think that when it comes to to the writing of the show, I think that the show that the writing was worse. Um, I don't think that the dialogue was necessarily bad, but I think that when it comes to writing the show, um, sorry, I'm just doing a thing um i think when it comes to writing that show you had a lot of characters who were making decisions that were inconsistent with their character from before i think that is bad writing now i agree like i I, like yeah this the acting itself was fine i don't think there was any issue with the actors they didn't suddenly become the actors actors. Um, i didn't think that the dialogue was that bad i think the issue is strictly with the the way the characters were handled and and the direction that they were given and the things that they did within the context of the story that made it bad Yes, but um, I, I would have to say that uh, I didn't like the dialogue. I didn't like the writing. I just didn't like where the character was going. That season was um, was difficult to watch. I only watched through it because I was curious to see what, what how they were going to how the trainer finish guns. it off. Um, oh yeah, because I knew because I knew it was done by season seven. Season seven, I realized, well, there's no saving this. It's going straight off. You know, like well. It Again, I think like that's you guys, you guys are making it sound like it went from it went from creme de la creme to no, no, it wasn't near the C- whiplash wasn't C-W, that CW level. Arrow. Well, listen, like it's not like the whiplash was that extreme, right? Like, because if you no. look at the show, like the the quality was steadily declining as the show went on. Um, so again, like I, I don't want to miss mispaint the situation. Like it wasn't like you know one week it was you know really good, and then the next week suddenly it was just like. You know, animated like South Park episodes. <laughs> you know, that's what you guys make it sound like. I, I'm not. I, that's not what I want to. That's not how I want to portray the the okay. situation. What I want to uh, portray it is that the first three to four seasons were pretty uh, pretty solid. Um, I would say season five was even okay. My issue is that um, Jesus Christ, the, why is this ponytail so fucking useless? Um, no, it's a, like the first like three to four seasons were fine. I think my, my core issue is why can't I escape from this goddamn full beat? Is that, Ooh, is that's that da- Daenerys doesn't act the way she did? It's not consistent with her character, and I agree. But you're saying most all these characters. A lot of characters sure didn't character. act consistently. Uh, I would say Tyrion didn't act consistently with his previous character. Oh, Jon Snow didn't act they'll, consistently they'll with his of, previous character. How? I, I wonder. Yeah, examples. and and, and there was fan service. There's a lot of fan service. There's always a lot of ha- fan service, Hans. You can't you can't blame say like oh there there was so much so so much uh, sex and 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 nudity like that that was oh, literally I'm like sorry. Not, not 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 fan service. A lot of uh, um, catering to the fan, like 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 Kligang Bowl, like you know Hound versus the Mountain. That was no, that had to happen. Like if you're concluding the series, you have to have that happen. No, that no, actually no, actually good. No, I I, I that that shouldn't have happened. I, I didn't. All right. Well, I know who I would keep word. out of the writing room now for sure. I'm sorry, Hans. No, like no, no, no. I'll be the best person in the writing room. 
whatever because I would not would, give the fans what they wanted. Okay, like, that that would that would make you the worst person in the room. And not act the way he used to. So in what way? So I think that, and again, like it's been a while since I've seen season eight. So you know, as far as specific examples, I'm gonna have a hard time kind of pulling them out because I haven't watched it recently. But from what I remember watching the show, I think that a lot of the lead up to the final confrontation with the Night King, um, to me, it felt it felt rough, right? Like a lot of the strategic decisions that were made in the battle itself felt kind of rough. I was fine with a lot of the stuff that was going on. And I want to stress that I didn't necessarily hate the ending itself either. Like, I don't necessarily hate that Bran is the person who is, you know, left in in charge of the country. Spoilers for season eight. Um, That... I I was amb- I I was I was neutral to it. I thought it was dumb that Tyrion suggested it, but like I'm neutral to it. I don't really care, right? My thing is that you but need how to. Does that mean he doesn't. He, he's not acting. He he he's not acting consistent with his character. Well, because normally Tyrion, somebody who, so normally Tyrion Lannister to me is someone who has who usually can follow a pretty clear logical line of thought. And I think that like a lot of the logical decisions that he makes are not clear. Like I think that he makes a lot of leaps that are not necessarily, you know, good ones. I don't know, man. I think if you rewatch it, you'll see that his, his decisions make sense on paper, which is something which is consistent with Tyrion's character. I mean, he started failing because there were there were unknowns that he didn't know. Like there were there were certain things like he didn't know that like um, that one Greyjoy guy joined um, Cersei. He he couldn't have known that. Things like that, but that doesn't mean that he's not acting the way Tyrion would act anymore. No, I understand that. I'm not trying to portray. Well, actually, I would have to like he he did act significantly differently. So because like he constantly tried to make concessions with the enemy, like declared enemies, like even though they're his family, like Cersei, well, he knows Cersei very well, and he won. He believed the agreement. One, he talks about how much he loves his family. Yeah, but he he understands how how um how like cunning and evil his sister is. Yes, he won't go. Yeah, but he was, he he even says he was hoping that she would yield when she saw Daenerys's power. Well, no, he didn't well, want to that... kill her. Well, that's, just because well, that's... he doesn't want to kill her doesn't mean he's not acting like Tyrion. No, I never said that. Pretty much, like he he knew better than to trust Cersei's word. One, okay, because he never because one in in season two he was running circles around Cersei because he understands her nature. Then all of a sudden he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna trust this. That I'm gonna trust that you're going to honor this agreement." When, when obviously she has no incentive to. Like, okay, I, I could just easily. She's not smart, Cersei. So she didn't have incentive to. The world was coming to an end. Hold on, no. Like, did you say that Cersei happened. was no, not smart? No, no. I, 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 I no, disagree Cersei with that. Not, like, Cer- no, Cersei was not smart. It, it was not written to be smart. She, she. Knew I disagree. All, all of her plans. All of her plans. Were- Season eight, like season Every eight, because like, she was destined to have a miserable life. Like I don't think like that's season, her. Season eight, she she had like a intelligent boost. Like she was starting to make all the right moves in season eight, but she just basically just put. No, no, no. Hold on. I think that you're being un- you're. I, I can't believe I'm defending no, no, Cersei Lannister, but no, I think that you're no, being wildly I'm, unkind to to. No, no, to her. I'm not. I'm being accurate because she's a very vindictive, cruel. That doesn't mean that you're dumb. That doesn't mean she's not smart. Well, she's not smart. She's been making a several dumb decisions. For example, she's was instigating the alliance with the Terrell. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Hold on, Hans. 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 Stop right. for just a moment. And let me talk. All right. You have to understand that she found herself as the wife to the fucking king of of Westeros. You don't just happen to get there because you look good. She was cunning and very. No, uh, that was no, that, that, was that, that was Tywin. That was Tywin. Yeah. And that was Tywin. That was all was Tywin's Tywin. positioning. But she didn't play her part, you because know. She wanted to marry Rhaegar. She didn't want to marry yes. Robert. Well, Robert was the second best choice after Rhaegar was killed, basically. Right, but she, I'm saying she didn't want to marry Robert. She wanted to marry Rhaegar. Robert was, yeah, she wanted to marry Rhaegar, and, you know, she settled for the 
the second best, which was Robert at his prime. He looked <laughs> good. He was he was dashing, but unfortunately, he he was but, in love with somebody else. But but and Hans, I don't, I don't with agree that. with you by saying that Cersei is not smart. Okay, I'll explain my position. Cersei is not smart. Cersei is cunning and well, Cersei is ruthless, but she's not smart. She did a lot of stupid decision that end up backfiring. For example, promoting the sparrow to the position that he got. Yeah, the fate like, of anyone, a mistake. Yeah, the yeah, but, empowering but hold wait, on. wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Empowering the fate militant just to get after Marjorie, who is uh, one of the key members of the Tyrell who the Lannister needed to keep in power because the Lannister was not in a good position to start pushing their weight like they did back in the previous season. The, they needed the Tyrell. Like, Tywin, like, you know, brilliantly set up. And then she but did everything in her power to ruin that alliance. You're missing something, though. You're missing a couple of things, actually. One is that um, we didn't know that the Faith Militant would go against her. She thought they would be just as corrupt as everyone else and, and be loyal okay. to put her. Okay, so, so, so you're saying, you know, promoting a zealot to a position of power. Yeah. No one saw thought, that coming. So you're telling she, me you saw this guy barefooted giving bread to the homeless and it's pretty She thought it was an act. Disease. She thought it was an exactly. act. Exactly. Yeah, she but, thought that he would be loyal to whoever put him in power. Also, the second thing that you're missing is that um she remember she thought that um that Marjorie was the the person from her from her um prophecy from the prophecy okay. so so basically basically a acting based on prophecy is a rational thought process then so oh, in a in a universe with magic it all, yes it all, wor it all worked out like that, that, everything that, that, came true well that's because it's self uh, self uh, fulfilling basically if you believe something's going to happen to you you're going to do everything in your power to kind of subconsciously make it happen technically speaking no she did everything no, she, she could to prevent it from hold happening on, hold, on, hold on hold on okay hold on L listen to the prophecy okay one is she would marry the king, not the prince. She couldn't help that she married the king and not the prince, right? The second one was that she would have three children and the king would have like 13 or something like that. She couldn't help that. How is that self-fulfilling? Because like she all did, these Okay, no, 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 no. Because, all right, here's the thing. Because one, those, those are just like, for example, I don't, no rational person will live their life based on some type of like um, but those things were someone. coming true yeah she but started then, off as a skeptic yeah. like you have to be fair yeah, yeah. yeah okay but why would you go and do the if if old decision happened there was better decisions that she could have done to to um to counteract this destiny but she picked the most wildly inaccurate decision also but, going back well, to the well, fake hold, on. Wait, hold, on, look, hold on hold on wait she wanted to get rid of marjorie and she did yeah, but but that that but did not help her cat case because it didn't. One, but that wasn't the goal. That, she didn't know he would react okay, that so way. The, the base of the argument is to prove the case that she is not intelligent. And here's my and here's my evidence to prove that she's not intelligent. One, okay. she didn't do her due diligence on, you know, this on the high sparrow basically. Okay, everyone would have done their due diligence to know what type of man they're putting. Under I don't think so. House, like I, I think that you're well, that you're speaking with the benefit. No, I think that be, you're speaking yeah. with the benefit of hindsight, dude. Like I, I agree. No, I'm not speaking with the benefit. Okay, everyone who has like a who, who's in a position of power, they know you have to vet people before Hans, you kind of bring them into your Hans, secret. Circle. There are two How? people in Westeros who are true to their word: Eddard Stark <laughs> and the High Sparrow. That was it. <laughs> well. True to their word, based on yeah, based on reputation. But here's the thing: you still gotta vet. You can't just take people at their how would you face vet that? Value. How would you vet that? Oh, easy. You would you would test one of his core convictions. Like let's say you understand the fate mill, not the fate mill, um, the um, what you call it, the fate of the seven. And you know one of the key tenets. Oh, I I should not lie with a woman and blah blah blah. You know, test him with a prostitute or something. Supposedly when he's like in private and see if he really. There's so many ways you could see if someone's being... That so wouldn't have worked, dude. Because, of course, he wouldn't have slept with a prostitute. <laughs> well, so, no. hey, quick question. No, wait, um, wait, would you guys, on, do you guys care if I invite Bob? I don't Bob. care. 
Bobby, he's one of the Comic Connection regulars who used to hang out Bobby, with us. He was in Comic Connection. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. No. Okay, because like... he he has he he feels that these are some weapon grade weapon grade bad takes. So he I, he apparently wants to join. So uh, Bob, I'm gonna send you a Discord invite. Weapon grade bad takes on, on what? The High Sparrow isn't true to his word. His willingness to play politics before his death shows his true form. I mean, That's what he, he said. Only became more and more corrupt. But well, the High the High Sparrow was a very good political operator. I have to admit, he basically dismantled all of Cersei's trump cards skillfully. He got close to the king. He basically uh, gained the king's confidence. He took away Cersei's trump card of basically using uh, trial by uh, what you call it. Combat. Yeah, by combat. No, the High Sparrow was a was a smooth operator. You know, he was very intelligent. I'll give him that. But Cersei was very dumb, not doing her due diligence. Like, Welcome to no. So, so, so Cersei is actually very smart. Um, I, I'm gonna have to come in here and defend. You know. Game of Thrones Hitler, unfortunately. I, 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 I have I have I have to disagree. She has been proven to be making a irrational Alright, let, let the man let the man speak his piece. Alright. So, you, you, no, you, you, okay. right. you have to you have to understand like what Cersei's character in her arc is about. Like her whole character is like yes, yeah, it like she's a jerk but like she's kind of tragic in a sense because her whole thing is like her life is dictated by her role as a woman in westeros like in that kind of society where women don't have autonomy and like her entire life is trying to eke out some kind of autonomy with the tools given to her and like she does bad but how does that explain her bad decisions though like i don't understand this so like she, like, as a woman, she doesn't have the kind of options and choices most men of, you know, granted, like, obviously, like, even though she is a woman, she's way more privileged than, like, random-ass peasants and stuff, but, like, compared Way to, more. Yeah, but compared to, like... She's we're, the we're, queen. Yeah, but we're, like, kind of comparing her to the other, like, nobility and stuff, you know? Um, but, like, the, the thing is, she constantly has to make suboptimal choices to exercise any amount of autonomy or free will in her life. Um, I, I disagree, because she was nobility. She was basically, she's the daughter of one of the most powerful lords in the realm. And she's no. the queen on top of that. She was well, basically killing people left and right. She literally had a order that killed all, all the bastards of Robert Baratheon. She ordered... She didn't do that. She uh, ordered... Uh, hold on. You, you, you she have didn't to, do you that. Have... Oh, wait, to... yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're correct. It was Joffrey, I think, that did Joffrey that. Yeah, did that. Joffrey. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Joffrey would do that. Sorry. It's just something sounds so close to the decision. Yeah, you are correct. Thank you for correcting me on that. But, like. Yeah, I'll continue. Uh, 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 KG. Sorry for interrupting you. I'm sorry. Forgive so, me. <laughs> so, there is, there is one thing I will actually agree with you on and disagree with Owen. Like, Cersei didn't necessarily become the queen, like, of her own wiles like that was definitely something that was or, like that that situation in her life was arranged by her father but that kind of plays into like her theme that like so much of her life was decided for her you know and she is constantly trying to kind of exercise her own free will and pursue what she wants her own like like her like her driving her driving motivation is to have the autonomy to act on her love for her brother, you know? Okay, um, understood. Yeah. And so, like, the, the, like, the, like, yeah, she fucked up with the alliance with the Tyrells, but there's two things about that. One, the Tyrells were, you know, definitely going to maneuver themselves to eventually supplant the, um... Yes. Um, yeah. She, she um, couldn't um, control, she couldn't control, like... Joffrey anymore with Marjorie around, much less Tommen. Well, here's yeah. the thing: yeah, she not, had Tommen well, okay. but but I don't want I don't want to paint her as a victim because she did a lot of horrible things. She basically oh, made no. her kids' no. lives she, she, like she, the worst. she is a, she is a horrible person. But like I I I, I like to think that you can view a care like you can view the tragedy of a character and not condone their actions. I think that's something you can do, and it's a very interesting thing to explore because. It, like, yeah. on one hand, you feel sympathy, but on the other hand, they are, like, really reprehensible people, you know? Mm-hmm. Understood. So, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. My, 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 my position is that, one, if that's the case, which is agreed, 
there was many decisions she could have done to get that autonomy. Actually, to be quite honest, well, she wait, wait, she I mean, she she was in a she was in a position to do that anyway. One, she's the she's the daughter of the most powerful lord in Westeros. Two, she's basically the queen regent or queen of the former king, the king that died. Okay, mm-hmm. and 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 three, she already had her council, her small council that was basically on her agenda, basically with. With um, basically, what's that guy's name? Quiver. I think that um, uh, Kyburn. I, I think one thing that Kyburn. that you're you're not taking into account though is that while she did have a lot of power in her own right, compared to the men in her life, she was still nothing. And I think that's what um, Bob's getting at. Yeah, but compared to other women in her time, she had a substantial. Okay, listen. She was literally basically starting like wars. She, she could literally start wars, basically. I mean, okay. Uh, she had that much. To, to, like she was part of the small council, she was the regent. To, right? to kind of to kind of agree with Hans, I, I agree with Bobby that she was a, um, you know, a product of of wanting to uh, get some autom- autonomy. But at the same time, she was also just cruel. Like she was also just wicked as well. Yeah, yeah and, and, totally. Like and, she, and, she's and, a and, horrible person. I'm not defending like yeah. her, her morality or but, anything. But, like, but, she had power, though. She had a lot, lot of power. She, she, she had a lot she of had, power. Like I said, she had power relative to, like, peasants and stuff, but all the nobility do. But, like, it, like so much of her life is decided for her. Like, you know, her, her mm-hmm. status as queen was arranged by her father. And when yep. she mm-hmm. was queen, like, she couldn't even, like, get fucking Robert Baratheon to... Oh, sorry, I forgot what language. She That's couldn't get fine. Robert Baratheon to, like, you know, <laughs> love her or show her any her. affection. Yeah. Like... No, he like I'm pretty sure if it was not implied, it was outright stated that like he would beat her when he was drunk and stuff like that. Like, um, like she like despite her relative high position in society, like he's the king. Like she has abs- she has to have absolute deference to him because he's the king. Um, I mean, there's there's a I, lot of examples of what you're saying. Like when um when there was another Lannister that came to help as. Uh, master of war and he, she wouldn't acknowledge her basically because yeah. you're, the, you're the queen mother and nothing oh. else oh Just... oh you mean oh you mean kevin yeah kevin lannister a uh, timeless brother yeah that's because he knows of her income basically and but, also, but it, it lends to what bobby also, is saying it, well it's not, well, well it's, it's not, because it, well one it's okay. not income. Oh, oh, go ahead go ahead yeah. No, actually, I'm sorry. You, uh, you can continue, KB. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I had like this I, way like too the, much. Like I said, I don't think it's necessarily incompetence in the way that, like, I, I, I'd say Cersei is actually probably one of the smartest and most adept players of the game, given her tools in Game of Thrones. Like, there's a reason why she actually becomes, like, proper queen and not just, like, the queen mother, you know? Well, she, she, she did proper queen, but the way that she did it, basically... There was no way the seven, the six kingdom, whatever, was going to join, was going to support her rule, logically speaking, because one, she basically broke the rules of the game. She made nobility fair game, and the, now what are you, all. What are you talking about? Okay, so there's this unspoken rule with nobility, pretty much. Like, okay, if let's say I bend the knee, all right, you pardon me, we're good. So that means if. So- the options on the table that I could surrender and I'll still keep my property I'll, I'll probably have to pay a cost but other than that I still get to keep my head and I'm good because we're nobility we're highborn we play the game right what Cersei did Cersei just nuked them off the face of the earth by using wildfire like she killed she basically it, all right like imagine oh my god i can't believe i'm saying this if you don't mind me just interjecting real quick um to kind of go against what bobby was saying i mean the only reason (laughs) she she became the proper queen is because her son died like she didn't really do you know that wasn't a plan of hers yeah how was i was i was like yeah it wasn't her plan but like it wasn't just because her son died like there there has to be like like she, she she instilled herself as the queen, and like if I remember correctly, Westeros has never actually had a queen. Like, and you have no. to understand, you have to no. understand, like there's a difference between being a queen and a queen mother. Like, like but when, but like, that was only yeah. because there was no one else. 
well, in the lineage. Though. Yeah, she basically like, just took it. She basically just took it because she even, won. She even, had the power to do it. It's not even she the just lineage, though, because she doesn't have royal. She doesn't have royal lineage. I mean, she has noble lineage, but not royal. But like that's what she said. She took that position. Like she didn't want her son to die, but there was a power vacuum, and through her own force of will and just psychotic desire to assert it. control, she took that power vacuum and made herself queen. Right, but that wasn't well, that was, again. But... That wasn't her her design. That was just like oh, Tom and killed himself. I'm not so saying now, yeah, but like like to. Like to, there. It's not like she set out to become queen. Like I'm not saying that's what she did. I'm saying that she is able to come up with responses to the limitations and scenarios presented to her a lot of the times, and she's able to, through her vicious, underhanded, you know, cruelty and her craftiness, she's able to come up on top until like the very end when yeah. you know, there's always so much. Yeah, but she that can doesn't do. make them. That doesn't make decisions. I mean, I don't think that's a that's an example of her intelligence. Even though I agree with you that she is intelligent, I don't think her becoming queen is an example of that. If that makes any sense. I, I like I get what you're saying. I'm not saying like. So I I would say that. I think that. I think it. I think the, that whole season finale, like of that se the season we're discussing. I think that speaks to her tactical and craftiness intelligence, but also, like, it's it's a good character moment because I think it does it is very crafty and conniving what she did with the wildfire. But at the same time, it also is a good character moment because it shows her kind of blindsidedness to her own family's emotional state. You know, like she never, like it never. Like she is so consumed by her hatred of um, uh, what, what was the what was the queen? Uh, the Tyrell. The time? Marjorie. Marjorie. She was so consumed with her hatred of Marjorie and the existential threat that she posed to her that she never even considered the well-being of her own son, like the mental well-being of her own son, and what might happen when the love of his life dies. You know, like it's like she did. She was blinded to that. But, like, I think she can be crafty and also, like, have an emotional, like, mental blind spot to her. Like, I think that's still good characterization. No, 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 no. I don't think anyone disagrees that ca that Cersei is not a great character. Um, I, I just think that's a, yeah. I a, a feat to say that she's intelligent. But I, I agree with you that she is intelligent. I'm, I, I, I have don't to... get me wrong. No, I have to disagree. She's not intelligent because every decision that she made, she literally destroyed her her son's rule because of her shenanigans. Like one. But let me ask you a question, Hans. Yeah. Ask you a question, Hans. It, it is intelligence the the ability to like execute a plan and quote unquote win? Because you can you can still lose and make intelligent decisions. Right? Every decision that she made fundamentally backfired on her and made the situation worse. Like, for example, she wanted to gain control back from her son, right? So basically, her way of thinking was, okay, I will basically cause turmoil with her, with my son's wife, removing. No, no, her that wasn't her. That wasn't her goal. Her goal wasn't to get control back from no, her, her son. Goal, no. Her goal was to take power away from from the Tyrell woman. <laughs> Well, in this case, like, well, well, yeah, hold, hold, hold on, real quick, real quick. In this, in this case, those two things are one and the same. Like, her, yes, exactly. her, her form of control is, like, in this, in the context of her role at that point in the story, her influence over her son, the king, is a form of power that Cersei has yes. to exert. Like, controlling her yes. son is power. Yes, and, and she knew that Marjorie was, you know, was but a also, good influence on Tommen. But not, not only that, but and she, it, it, it we can assume that she believed that um, Marjorie was the the queen that would take everything from her from the um, prophecy that she had. Right. Well, that's that that's fine, but but that's her position anyway. Like she, okay, Tommen is king. Tommen married Marjorie. Marjorie is now queen. All right. So basically, her best move at the time would have been to go back to Castle Rock. And live out her fruitful days doing something else, or being remarried to another noble but, that Tywin was going to but probably you, set her. But remember, she she was thinking that 
she that Marjorie would take everything that she held dear that was in the prophecy so whether well, she went to yeah, Catholic that, Rock yeah. or not that, that that that's fine that's fine but and, and you know if she it, if she loves her son like she said she would she would understand that he would be happier with Marjorie and he would be a better king if he but had she a loves her children over everything else so how do you know that she wasn't thinking she would kill Tommen she would kill Tommen like what do you mean like like all right so my my okay I, I'm getting lost here so basically she doesn't make good decisions. She she does not make intelligent decisions, and she's not thinking things rationally. All right, she's thinking things in her own warped view that would that it's hard to relate to sometimes because it's like out of nowhere she comes to these opinions, um, to these conclusions. Like, like the him and the Marjorie situation was she just did not like the fact that she was losing influence over her son as a mother. And also as a regent over a king, you know, th those two are one and the same. But the way she went about reserting back control was the worst decision she could have possibly done. She could have done so many things, like basically have more of a heart to heart with the son, um, help the son with certain problems that the son was having to gain more of his confidence. Like, oh, you're a good, you're, you're still a good advisor. I'll keep you on the council or something like that. She, there's so many things she could have done to still whoa, maintain whoa. control. Well, well, one thing I do want to be clear is that there's no way that she would have had an opportunity to have that sort of conversation with her son in the first place. One, you're assuming that she's the kind of person who would have that sort of conversation. Her goal is to try and manipulate her son to stay to keep her own power, to whoa, make sure that she doesn't I become irrelevant. Killed. And also, Marjorie is working against her, so whoa, she wouldn't you, have that not, opportunity. Not, yeah, but guess not to what? Mention, Marjorie still... put that, not to mention, Marjorie put that thang on him. And oh, he yes, was infatuated. There's no but, way a but, talk with mommy is going to. Oh come yeah. on, let's be honest. No, no, let's be let's be honest. Tommy is a mama's boy, and no, Cersei's not after he, not after. We need that. to rewatch that season. I I, I, yeah. re I, I watched that season because still Cersei still had plays moves, at still had plays to be made. Because at the end of the day, Tommy is still Cersei's uh, son and. I think that I think you think they had a relationship, relationship that they just didn't have. Well, how like, would you know they did not have that relationship? Like you, you well, either way, regardless of if he did or not, in the episode in the episodes we could see that he like I think in one of his quotes was I want to stay in bed with you all day. Well, yes, of course. The yeah yeah was I don't doubt that. Like that 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 was that that was good. Oh, but but listen, I'm saying, listen, Sir, we have to make the assumption that Cersei did spend some time with Tommen, all right? And they still have some type of relationship because they're mother and son. I don't right? think you need, I don't think you can make that assumption. Like, I think well, Marjorie I really was purposely keeping him away. Well, no. Well, you couldn't make the assumption that they didn't. Here's the fact. She's you, an emotionally what? manipulative woman. Like, yeah, I mean, right. not that the woman part is even, relevant, but she's emotionally even, manipulating even, him. Even better, which means she probably has her claws still no, no, no. sunk Marjor in there somewhere. No, no, no. Marjorie is emotionally manipulating Tommen. Yes, I, mean, I agree with that. Are. No disagreement. Not, they no they disagreement. both are, but Marjorie has more but, sway over him but, at the but, moment. But, I don't know. But to say, but the, yeah. At the moment, but to say that there's no relationship, yeah, but to say there's no relationship between and Tommen is ridiculous. Like, literally, she raised... I'm not saying it, I'm not saying there's no relationship there, but very clearly Marjorie is isolating Tommen from her, so that way she can increase her own, you know, choke. Also, do we, do we forget that Tommen, like, agreed to pretty much all the stakes that would harm, um, Cersei? Like, taking well, yeah. away the... The um, yeah. Yeah, trial by yeah. combat. Well, that's because didn't he, got, he also he didn't he also agree fire. to her being shamed? <laughs> yeah, he agreed yeah, to the walk of shame. He, yeah, because he got influenced by the uh, High Sparrow. He he's very he's, he's very malleable. Yeah, that's, but that's if, one of if the major but if he's so malleable, then why would he, he had... stand up to his wife when who's trying to keep her away? Yeah, but my point is saying is that she had moves to play because Tommen is malleable, and if. Cersei and Tommen were in the room like no, they but, were before. But these these things work against you, Hans, because it's saying that he's more easily manipulated by other people, not his mother. So much so that he would work against his mother. Well, here's the thing. That's because they've been one, they've been isolating him, all right. Two, all right, one, he loves Marjorie. He loves Marjorie. 
Now, my main argument, not to get distracted, because we went on a whole different tangent, pretty much. All right, if her objective was to gain more influence on Tom, and there's other place she could have done to do that, period. No, right. the thing is that you're using you're you're glossing over the fundamental part of your of your argument in an attempt to make you, yourself sound you explain, more correct. Can, can, can you, you so, can, can you explain that, please? Like break yeah, it down yeah. because you made so so your right, whole so your whole your, the whole crux of of your argument is that she had other moves she could have made in order to in order to get back in with Tom and and your one of your suggestions was talk to him. But we just, but well, we're, one. but that's we're, one. but we're, but we're contesting, other. we're contesting that she would not have had an opportunity based on the text of the show itself. And you're not, you're, you disagree with our, with us uh, saying that, but you're not providing any, any context for why you disagree. No, I'm, 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 and okay. instead of taking the, the, your position as I'm, an the, assumption. The, the, the thing I'm disagreeing with is your insertion that he didn't she did not have a strong relationship with Thomas. That was the I didn't say I she didn't have a strong relationship. I said that that Marjorie was man, emotionally manipulating Tommen in yeah, order to keep no them away from there. one another so that yeah. way Marjorie could continue to manipulate Tommen. Therefore, Marjorie under no circumstance would have allowed any opportunity for Tommen to speak with her wife personally or alone. Oh, that's that 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 yeah, that that I will have a problem with because one, she's still the queen mother still, so she still have access which means to nothing the when there's an actual queen involved. Not, not more than the queen, yeah. Yeah, that that was one of her major. She um, was locked up. Calls. She was locked up. You really think if that boy had a pair that he wouldn't have stopped him? Like, <laughs> well, that would be well. Once again, going back to my original argument, yeah, she made that horrible decision promoting the high sparrow, which got her locked up in the first place would remove a lot of her options to influencing Tommen in the first place because she was in that cell. I don't Marjorie, think it's I don't think it was a bad decision oh yeah. in the first place. Like I think that it ultimately was, didn't work a, out well for her, but I don't it, think it was, it was a bad a, call. It, you know what? It was a, it was you guys, a, it was a guys, bad decision completely. Guys, why, okay. why would you You guys we're going you, in what? we're going in circles here. He, here's the most important thing that Fitzroy wants to know. Abby, who is the strongest fighter in Westeros? Bobby, even still there? He he's here. Oh, sorry. What were you saying? Who do you think is the strongest? Who's the best fighter in Westeros? Uh, I mean, in what sense? I mean, there's a lot of different types of fighting. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is exactly a Bobby Make answer. Your argument. <laughs> it's true because, like, you have like even on one on one, like, okay, you could have someone who's like a more adept fighter, but like you could have someone who's a less adept fighter, but with a fighting style that just trumps that other person, you know? Who do you think is the best fighter in Westeros? Oh shit, hold on. Um, well, well, here's my here here's a way to frame it that'll maybe make it a little bit easier for you. So, assuming that we had a round robin tournament where the loser was wished back to life with the Dragon Balls, who do you think has the most wins? Um, probably the mountain. Okay. So, in this case, we're thinking that the mountain's sheer physical presence is enough to outmuscle or outmode any any skill. Oh, yeah. he, well, and, and in, in this, in this dead monster also helps. <laughs> I mean, in this subtext, <laughs> the mountain would beat more people than he would lose to. But is he the best fighter? I mean, if if winning and losing is the only thing that matters, then yeah, I would say so. If, if, yeah, if, if your if your win loss ratio is how we're judging it, then yeah, he would be the best. I would think. I would I, I would uh I I said last time um Oberyn and um Arthur Dane, you know, if we were including alive and dead people. In is Arthur world. Dane the uh the old guy who's like the king's guard for Daenerys? No, like, Arthur, Arthur Dane is the sword of the morning. Yeah, that's Barry. Saw Stanley. him at the Tower of Joy. I'm having a brain fart. Which one was he? He was the one that everyone, like Eddard, always said he beat him in single combat at the Tower of Joy. He, he dual wielded. Oh, this is the guy from like the flashback, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. All 35 seconds of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, er everyone regards him as like one of the top fighters in the kingdoms. Um, mm. What was the, the old guy, his name again? Wait, are you talking oh, about Barrison Selmy? Barrison Selmy says that he was one of the best he's ever seen. Yeah, actually, they're basically one to one. Um, even even George uh, said they're pretty much the same in skill. It's only if Arthur had the sword, the sword of the morning dawn, 
Arthur would win in that exchange because the sword is such a tiebreaker. I never understood I, I, how I it is that like the, like the sword doesn't make the man. <laughs> well, apparently to George it does because that because he said like if they if if it was out that sword they would pretty much be even like I on mean, even I've... playing ground. But with the sword he has to give it to Arthur. Like yeah, he said that. I, I, I'm just I going for what a... he said. I think there is a fact like that is a factor to consider maybe not like D D or anything like that but definitely valerian steel is you know not yeah. fair well that's not even the valerian steel it's, it's like basically one to one to valerian it's a, a meteor that was forged into a stone that's milky white it's basically a lifesaver in thrones it's basically a lifesaver basically that's what it is because it shines and it glows Yeah, that's that. That sword is OP. It's a OP. It's a very OP sword. It's like a plus three long sword or something. Oh God, yes, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's, ri it's a ridiculous sword. I I'm sorry. I, I get. I get. I'm sorry. I get kind of. I sound like I get heated. It's just. I just love that whole series. And I mean, I've known. You, I think we've known everything. you long enough that that's just your argument, boys. I don't think that's you getting <laughs> actually upset. Yeah. Yeah. Just your okay, cool, voice. Cool. Well, yeah, because like. I grew up in a household where we, we are not afraid to debate as much as we can. Um, my opinion is is Oberyn and Arthur Dane. Those who I think are the two. Oh, and uh, Robert Baratheon as an honorable mention. In his prime, of course. Not Bobby B. <laughs> Bobby B is fun. I'll invite him to my parties, but n not to the front line he'll, of my back. He'll, he'll, he'll eat all your food and uh, screw all your horse. Uh, yep. Yeah, damn it. He'll my horse yeah he sure would actually i think i'll i'll be okay with that because i would love that type of guy around he sounds like a life of the party he can talk about making the eight. Oh my god I, like i want to i want to have a guy like that that's like oh let's just go around and just like i wouldn't do it personally because that sounds dangerous but he would he would I have so that. many stds god the stds yeah i like, know that's what i was thinking about it would be incredible I never do that It'll be incredible, but he will have stories for days, though. He's a biological miracle. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, concession time. All right, so now that I'm cooling down, I'm thinking about... Okay, guys. Cersei... So unintelligent. All right, she is intelligent. Um, My only problem is that she makes really bad choices. There. She's... Yeah. She's intelligent, but she makes really bad choices. That's my concession. Because, wow. My I'm god, sorry. I nearly got... I'm sorry, I, I nearly got swept by this wild buffalon. Jeez. Oh my with, god. My, with what? My god, like, season season 7 and 8 was such why? an emotional roller coaster. I don't know why it was so difficult. <laughs> oh my god. Lord you know what? We need more titles. I agree. <laughs> For what? We just need more titles. You know how, you know, um, Jamie's the Kingslayer. Yeah. I mean, the if you want to be a boss, you could just make them for yourself. I, th I think I may have to. Oh, man. Where is the exit to this place? Oh, wait, is that Rambo? Yes, it is. Wow, they have Rambo in this game? That's crazy. They have, like, a bunch of 80s action movie stars. So Rambo, really? Robocop, they have and Robocop? Terminator. They yeah. have Terminator? Yeah. Where are you oh, playing? So you can do Syl Sylvester against um, Schwarzenegger. What are you playing? Oh, that's really... Mortal Kombat really cool. 11. Oh, nice. Wow. See, I like how they're bringing back our dreams, because we always wanted to know who would win in a fight. Like, you know, Rambo or Terminator. I mean, it's clearly Terminator, not close, right? Well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's clearly. Well, I, I don't know, man. Yeah, I like, mean, I mean, Rambo... Sarah Connor, Sarah Connor beat the Terminator. Yeah, and Rambo is basically Sarah Connor, but with balls. Oh wait, wait, are we still streaming? <laughs> yes, and you're allowed to say that. That's okay, as long as it doesn't get oh, okay, like okay. sexually explicit. We're fine. Okay, I got. Yeah, I, I totally. Cause I'm not looking at the screen, so okay, I forget. Sorry about that. I'll make. I'll keep. I'll keep an eye on that. Um, yeah, he, he's basically Sarah Connor, 
that but a man instead. And trained. Like and Sarah trained. Connor was just a random lady. I have to admit, Sarah Connor was an amazing woman. Like that was one of the best female characters I've ever seen. Like she was she was the best mom ever. Like no, <laughs> that was a well written female character. Bob, weren't you ever. a big Terminator fan? Uh back in the day, yeah. I mean T one and T a lot of people don't like Terminator One. Oh, I do. Terminator I love one is horror. amazing. One and two are the Terminator best. Terminator One is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, the first yeah, the first two were were amazing, especially one. One he was terrifying. Mm -hmm. I mean one is ba essentially a horror film. Yes, that it is, is correct. It is. And yeah. um Man, that really makes me want to see a kill count for it. Did he yeah. do one already? <laughs> He probably did. doesn't want to do the entire series because he can't just do one. And the special effects on part one was 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 really good for the time. Agreed. Oh, you know what? What uh, Demi James needs to do a kill count for the platform. Oh man, I love that. I would love that. That was a great recommendation, by the way, Fitz. And I want to let you know that I watched it at a work event. <laughs> oh, nice! Really? Wait, wait. Yeah. Which recommendation? The platform. The platform. Oh, okay. I have to look that up then. The platform. I, I, it's on I, Netflix. I really enjoy it. I, I set up a Netflix so, watch party for my for my team, and we ended up watching it. <laughs> um, do you know what's another good movie? Okay, it's not really a good movie. It's a it's a horrible guilty <laughs> pleasure. Um, really love that hard sell. <laughs> the room. How how the could room. you even think the room of that? Is amazing. Um, yeah, it's amazing. It's the best worst movie ever. You can that movie and find something read time you watch it. It's like it's like a Christmas it's like Christmas every day watching that movie. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. And like like hey, like the heart the heart in that movie was like you could just feel the heart and soul that was put into making the room. Like he literally loved making that Isn't movie. Isn't that the movie where there's like no no I'm thinking of Panic Room. Um the yeah, the one with Tommy talking about, You're tearing me apart, Lisa. Lisa. That's hey, not a good Mark. movie. It's the oh my god! It's That's the, not a good movie. Well, of course. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but we have hipster bad movie nights where we just watch bad movies. I mean, so if you want to waste your time doing good. that, you're more than welcome to do so. But uh, you can't pay what me to do some, that. What are some of the other ones? Oh, there is another one. Uh, it's just as bad, but it's not really as good. It's bad, but it's not really good bad. It's just. It's just is it strong weird. bad? Okay, yeah. it's wow. Do you remember it's... Strong Bad? Oh my god. Yeah, I remember. I remember Strong Bad. Man, I feel like I have to pour one out for Adobe Flash. <laughs> like... oh, oh yeah. Man. Remember Newgrounds? Yeah. Yep. That's really dating us. I just want to let you guys know. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Whoa, okay, man. hold on. Um, there was another movie like The Room. It, it was made by this arc. He. It was made by this guy who used to be an architect. And it, it was basically a power fantasy type of movie, but the guy is horrible with acting. Oh my god, I can't. Oh, actually, that. I have a friend that did movies like that, and um, I stopped going after she showed me Visitor Q. Have you ever heard of that? I haven't. Hmm, that sounds familiar. No, I'm gonna say no. All right, it's a it's a very bad movie. Fitzroy, okay, I'll put it in my list. Stomp or strength on a rapidash. Do you have a strength user? Yeah, I mean the 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 HMs in this game can be reused and deleted at, at will. So. Oh, okay. But Isn't strength stronger than stomp? It is, Wait, but, but stomp has a flinch, flinch chance. Right? Yep. So stomp is sixty-five power, strength is eighty. So is the fifteen power How worth? How fast is the rapidash? Uh, it's maxed out speed, so pretty quick. I'll go with stomp. Yeah, I'll go with stomp. Okay. Um, I was considering deleting strength for agility as why. Well. Just because you never know when a random setup move might be helpful. I gotcha. But yeah, so you were saying about your the, this movie experience you had? Mm -hmm. Who's that, me? Yes. Or He's... Hans? Uh, you. Oh, first. I was just saying that the movie the movie's terrible. I just wanted to know if anyone heard about it. No, I have not. Honestly, I don't watch that many movies anymore. I have been watching The Boys, though. I'm like one episode in with my wife in season two. Oh, I, do, I did enjoy The Boys. 
I haven't finished it yet, so please no spoilers for season two. But but I definitely appreciated season one. Thought it was really interesting. Yeah, I heard good things about that. So it's it's, it's worth the hype. I, I would recommend it. Oh no, this is coming from a guy who recommended Game of Thrones though. So Game of Thrones is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> kind of um, colors my my opinion, but um, uh, but I've enjoyed season one so far, and season two doesn't seem to be disappointing yet. So, okay, I'll like, put it in my watch list. Yeah, I think it's worth the, worth the time. Dude, the guy who plays um, shoot, I forget his name. Butcher um, Huey, the Frenchie. Butcher. Okay, Butcher. Carl mm-hmm. Ur- like Carl Urban. That guy needs to be casted as Batman. Yes, yes he does, I agree. Oh, he would be a good Batman. Yes, he would. And have you ever seen Dread? Yes, that I love that movie. He was fantastic in Dread. That, oh, that movie I could watch like multiple times and not get tired of it. It was just, it, it, was, a, it was a true to form Dread movie. You know what I loved too? Is in every, all of these superhero movies, there's always that one like obligatory scene where... Um, they're in the suit, but their face is showing. Yeah. yeah, because they have to, you know, have a scene where you can see that that's them playing the character. Mm-hmm. Not in. Dread. He always wears the helmet because that's what Dread would yes. do. Yes. Yeah, I think there was like a suggestion from one of the directors to have his helmet in one scene, but he like saying no. Like we have to stay true to character. Yeah, he didn't take off that helmet. Well, I mean, at all. Sylvester took it off, and everyone can see that it's Sylvester under oh, that I helmet. Never... I imagine I, Judge I Dredd is not the kind of person that you want to hire a character actor for. Wait, what? He said you, you wouldn't want to hire a character actor to portray Judge Dredd. That would be dangerous. You mean a method actor? Yeah, a method actor, that thing. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, dangerous for who? For criminals? <laughs> I mean, you have to remember the definition of a criminal is super loose for Judge Dredd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's the it's the letter of the law for him. I don't think it's it's loose. It's any crime. Yeah, I think well, he's well, the, the more. Point is the... Every, everyone's a criminal in a fa- in the fascist society that Judge Dredd takes place in. Yeah, and Judge Dredd is the basically he's the letter. He, he's basically the letter of the law type of guy, a guy rather is... than the spirit. I mean, he is, but, but I mean, there, there's like, like in Dread, he he lets a guy go. He lets a couple guys go, actually, that directly disobey a judge's order. Yeah, from what from what little I know of the franchise, he's more the spirit than the letter. Huh. That reminds me of that. Uh, was that season one from season one or season two from Doctor Who? Where uh, the doctor is criticizing the the Slovene or whatever for letting one person go, and it's like great, mm. you let one person go the one time, and you want to pat yourself on the back for it. What about all the other times where you didn't? Yes. <laughs> so yeah. Give me my damn credit. It was basically that. I don't. Yeah, I don't so. Uh, but I can't remember the last time I watched a movie. To be honest, I don't. I don't did I want? Did we watch any movies in 2020? Hmm. Good question. Um, Wonder Woman 84 came out. It's like it's at all. terrible. Well, that's not a movie. That's a TV show. No, it's a movie. No, Wonder Woman 84. No, no, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm talking to my wife. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> um, I don't think we did. Yeah, I don't think I watched a movie in 2020. That might be the first year, other than like maybe my like first birth year, where I didn't watch a single film. You mean like oh, you didn't wow, watch a film, crazy. or you didn't go to the theater? I don't think I watched, watched a film. You watched Platform, right? Yeah, but that was last. That that was in 2019. I'm pretty sure. Oh, wait, um, or did, when, oh, no, when Platform I think came, came out, out in 2020, so I think that might be Joker it. Joker came out this year. Hold on, I did not watch the Joker. Oh. My wife, uh, not my wife, my mother keeps trying to get me to watch it. Yeah, you really should. I think they only watch one movie in the movie theater, and I think... Yeah, that, the platform's that was, that 2019 was... film. Hmm? Yeah, so that was the only movie I watched. 
Good movie, in my opinion. Which movie, Hans? Yeah, I probably could. Uh, the Joker. Okay. Joker. Yeah. So Joaquin Phoenix. I don't. Yeah, ju I mean, just for his performance, you gotta watch it. Um. Yeah, like. So yeah, I know that a lot of um, people good. have. Good. I've recommended it. But, like, I'm looking through and, like. Um, wow, there are like no masterpiece people make it out to be, but it was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the only masterpiece is the night and the Godfather one and two. <laughs> That's a really I mean, good movie. Like I... Alien is a masterpiece. Yeah. I freak. Oh, um, yo, Bobby is saying all the right things right now. <laughs> and I'm sorry, say that one more time. Yes. That one more time. No, 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 what, what Bob said. Oh, Alien is a masterpiece. Oh, yeah, that movie is amazing. Also, yeah, so Alien is movie. better than Aliens. Yeah, I don't think that's particularly yeah, close. Uh, I think personal yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Well, I, I like them both. They're both good. Yeah, I thought they were both good. They're both good, but Alien is better than Aliens. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it had more atmosphere to it. I did enjoy it, yes. It was a movie. It felt like a movie. You could honestly drink the atmosphere. Like it was movie. that thick. I, I know it sounds bad when I say it, but you know what I mean. It, it's like, I was watching... It felt like a cinema experience. Yeah, like I was watching art in moving form. And then Aliens was basically a popcorn, a well, good popcorn movie. Yeah. It's a really good action film. Well, it's the T2 to Terminator. You know, it's it depends yeah. on the genre you like more. We will determine which one you like better. Yeah, I think yeah, that's fair. Too, I, don't, I don't think, yeah. like, I get this, like, I half agree with you. I'd say the genre shift is more stark from Alien to Aliens than T1 to T2. Like, T1 really? And, yeah, T1 and T2 both have strong elements of horror and action like i would call them like action horror movies whereas alien i would call just a straight horror movie That's like crazy. i think the horror i think the horror elements in alien is stronger uh, than t1 or t2 and the, the the shift to a pure action movie with relatively little horror is like a bigger genre shift I'd say, I'd say, I mean, if you, oh, if you, or, or, if you or, didn't or, have, but let me, okay, I would say, I'd say there is a, sh a slight shift from T1 to T2, but like, I think it's a pretty significant shift. I would say it's like a percentage shift. Like there's a little more levity with some of the humor and stuff in there, but like, I like it just kind of throwing random numbers out. Like say T1 is like 60% horror, 40% action. I think, you know, T2 might be like the flip or maybe like 70 30 whereas like aliens was like pretty much a hundred percent horror to like to 90 percent action like 10 percent horror maybe yeah speaking of horror I any, don't I mean any, any, Hans, any, before before you yeah. go before you go with that I I have to agree with Owen I don't th I think number one if you were to not consider the action horror genre as a genre I think we would both, I think everyone would consider Alien and Terminator 1 as horror and then consider their sequels action. But. Yeah, I T2, don't think. So. Like, T2, like T2 seems completely action, and T1, it's like all, uh, all the horror tropes are in T1 and they're not present in T2. I would say, like the, the, I would say, like, the first half. I would, like, for T2, I would say, like, there's a little bit less horror in the middle, um, where, like, I think, like, especially, like, in the first, like, third or so of the film, they still really lean I think it's the been a really aspect. long time since you've seen that film, because there is no horror element in Terminator 2 at all. There is. Terminator 2, I can't remember any. Like, they play up T, they play up T-1000 to be really horrifying. Yeah, he, he is horrifying, but they don't put him in the horror light where he's like you know like he he's it, like the slasher was, genre where it it was just it was suspenseful 
There was a lot of suspense with T1000. I disagree, but I will also concede that I haven't seen in a while, and so maybe my memory is not as uh, sharp as it could be. Yeah, I think that it's just... Um, it, it's just it's a very different film, and I think that for that reason I didn't like it as much. I think that the Terminator franchise made a better... made like a smoother transition to action. God, why is this Oricorio so that bad? Alien did? Yeah, yeah, exactly. All I want. Okay. Oh wait, is this a good nature actually? I think Oricorio is a special attacker, right? Yeah, this is actually a good nature. Okay, finally got a good one. Wait, speaking of horror movies, like any good recent horror movies? Because that that kind of genre is kind of like became a joke now. Uh, there's actually been a lot of really good ones lately. Uh huh. Yeah, like what? A lot of good horror well, I, I would like to know. Um, the platform. I really like the follows. <laughs> platform the was great. Yeah. So platform. I really is, like is, it. Okay, pure horror. Okay. I really like. It's like a psychological it horror. Oh, okay. Yeah, it follows. Also very good. Oh, it follows. Yeah, that that was good. It was inter it was an interesting concept. Um, the Invisible Man. Was the Invisible good. Man was surprisingly good. Yes. Really? So I've been oh, told. I haven't watched it yet. I heard, yeah, I, I, when I first saw that, I was not excited but i was pleasantly surprised i okay, was, I was, gonna watch I that was sad that the um that the trailer made it pretty obvious that the like woman wasn't actually insane and... yeah yeah i agree the the, pro the promotion but that's the pro promotion for most movies it feels like like in fact i have a friend who won't watch trailers Because Honestly, that seems so like a that seems like a plus EV play. Got to be honest. <laughs> a what? Like, I think that's good value. Like on your friend's part to to not watch trailers. Yeah. I think that they end up net better in life. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think tra trailers in general are just not done correctly anymore. I think it's just that, like, I think that, like, cinema in general, um, like, the movie theater experience this year in particular, uh, or I guess 2020 in particular, was really rough. Um, For obvious reasons. Yeah, I think so. Your whole industry just kind of shuts down. And it's like, well, what do I do now? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but th there's actually been quite a few pretty good horror movies. Um, you just have to kind of look for them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Invisible Man. Yeah, because I I was looking at the trailer and I was like, man, this thing looks kind of ridiculous. But then and you're saying it's good. Okay. I'm, go I'm gonna. You, yeah. you know what's what? another good psychological? I I don't even know if it would be considered horror. Maybe thriller. But um. Uh, Parasite. Have you heard of that? I've been meaning to watch that. That's the oh, Korean please, film. Right? I really please, enjoyed please, it. Please, please, no spoilers, because one of my one of my um. One of my friends was recommending that I watch that. So, yeah, that's top on yeah, my I, list, actually. I recommend it as well. It's pretty good. Okay, yeah. All right, I'll watch that tomorrow, then. Well, not tomorrow. I'll probably watch it over the weekend again. Like, the weekend. Like, next weekend. Parasite. Okay, I'll watch that. Yeah, I heard good things about it. Yeah, I, I definitely have as well. Have you I think seen it won that? an award or something. It did. It won Best Picture. Wow, that's crazy. And it's a foreign uh, film, right? Yeah, yeah. it's like the it first is, foreign yeah. film to win uh, Best Picture, I think. I believe uh, so. That that banana, that is good, okay. Um, also, Sorry to Bother You is really good. Oh, oh my god. Sorry to Bother You is am I oh my gosh. Yeah. That movie's amazing, movies. but, but oh, halfway wow. through, there is a hard right turn that that movie takes. Oh, it's great. Like oh my like I hard right like at the end I was I, <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was watching but it, I do recommend that movie. Sorry to bother you. I don't recall that one. It's so a it's great a, movie. So it's a you, comedy. You'll, you'll like um, it because it's kind of like, like what is it? Okay. It's kind of like a um it, the setting is a um call center. Mm. Uh huh. I'm not gonna say anything else. Just, just watch it. It's gonna hit home. 
That's what I'm hearing. Okay, you know what? I'm, uh, that's gonna be. Okay, it's gonna. Okay, it's gonna be my second. I'm gonna watch Fistroy and Owens recommend. Well, Bob, Bob, I haven't channel. seen it. Recommended it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fit. Okay. You know, you guys should have a YouTube channel. I do have a YouTube channel. Commenting over more. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> literally, no, literally everybody no, in this room know. has one. <laughs> yeah, no, except for me. I don't have a YouTube channel. Well, get on it then. <laughs> okay, I, I really think everyone should have one. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> that reminds me, I have to actually check my YouTube comments and see if anybody's responded. Hmm. It's always a pleasant surprise when you have somebody in the comments. Which, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, did, did you know that the like button is free? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, guys. Whoever's watching this stream, just hit the like button. I'm just assuming it's Subscribe, to too. And that's like button. <laughs> what? Smash that like button. Yeah, smash it. Smash it like your high school that. sweetheart. Oh, my. <laughs> oh. Wait, oh, okay. <laughs> Skirting the line. Yeah, yeah. Well that, that... done. <laughs> well played. All right, I, I take it back because I think I just physically repulsed my wife. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, that can be a little gross sometimes. That's okay. We love you. Anyway, you guys, I think I'm gonna call it quits for tonight. But this was very fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll do it again yeah, sometime. Yeah, it was. I hope I hope everyone who was listening in would enjoy it too. I hope this is good content. Content with a K because he's streaming MK. Yeah, because we turned for a good half of it. It was just it was just Game of Game of Throne ranting for a good portion. Shoot, that, that's gonna be money. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna have so many comment wars. It's gonna start a whole comment. Feed, feed that algorithm. Yeah, uh, right. Hell yeah. For all like three people that watch my videos. I appreciate each and every one of you, by the way. I, oh, thank you. Hey, I appreciate you. Oh, I literally we, got PTSD. We, we really have to, um, we really need to get on, like, these keywords and these hashtags. Apparently, they're, um, it's a part of the game that we're both missing when it comes to YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I needed to, to do that that thing do you guys have like um do you like if you don't mind me asking do you guys have like target goals for your ideal like su subscription like count like you're aiming for for this year not for me uh, i mean for for my youtube channel it basically is just a repository for my videos uh from twitch i don't really like create content just for youtube necessarily mm. um because i can't save the videos on twitch um okay I, I'm actually going to really give an effort to grow a YouTube channel this year. So I'm going to get back on that. In fact, I was recording oh, some no. stuff earlier today. Yeah, um, my goal is to grow this uh, Twitch channel, actually. Um, yeah, um, like, uh, send me your guys' YouTube channel. I'll, I'll, I'll follow it as much as possible. Yeah, Fistro, you, yeah, cool. your channel will, will explode. Like, your content has always been very good. Oh. Well, I mean, for back in 2004, maybe. Hey, dude, man, I don't care what YouTube thinks, man. Your content was the bee's knees, man. Yeah, but it is a different game now. Yeah, it is. But yeah, I, I wouldn't. Like, everything is professionally produced. Get back into that game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. It's but, all professional. I mean, I just don't have now. any. I don't have the passion for it anymore to even want to do anything about that like that subject matter oh yeah of course um but yeah youtube now is, is a whole business now you can you literally like i've looked at the interface behind the scenes on this it's very thorough yeah it's like um like there's a lot of youtube channels that are like professionally produced by large companies now yeah that's correct yeah so all right you guys i'm gonna call it a night you guys have a good one yeah you too man Right. I'm still gonna be in this channel though, so if you guys want to keep talking, oh. okay, I'll, I'll probably put you put you on your uh, stream. Okay. Oh, right on, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, you got it. Cool, All right, cool, peace. Cool. All right. Oh my goodness. Hey, AKB, thank you for in two cents on Game of Thrones. It's always good to have a fellow Game of Thrones person.
man. Also, I KGB excited. lives for arguments, so. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. That's good. I, I, I don't mind arguments. It's my natural element. Uh, people nowadays are kind of like too, what you call it. It's just a different. It's just a different world now. I'll just say that. Yeah. It, it is. It is. Um, I am. I am looking forward to um the House of the Dragon, in 2022. Uh, I'm I, my I'm optimistic that they're gonna do a decent job on that one, you know. Hopefully. Hopefully, 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 because uh, you know, the um the Dance of Dragon um, section of storytelling is 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 chock full of great stuff. You know, I really want to see that on the TV screen. Yeah, for sure. I uh, I listened to the audiobook for uh. The uh, house, the house and blood audiobook, and there's a lot of interesting stories there. Oh yeah, is that the one where they go over like the the, the backstories of each Targaryen king and how they were ruled? Is that is that is that yeah, it? Is that... They bas it's basically the complete history of the Targaryens. Yeah, like um, I don't know how you pronounce his name correctly, but Jaehaerys, um, the counselor, the the first great of of the Targaryens. Yeah, they fleshed him out more in that one, didn't they? I think so. It's been a long time since I've watched or listened to it. Yeah. Yeah. Like George George is a fantastic storyteller and writer. Like like he really got me into uh storytelling more because like he really knew how to create a realistic. Yeah. Like, so, uh, he you know, certainly has a he, he really hard knows his history. <laughs> you know what? The, I was watching this YouTube channel about fans dissecting and doing pie charts on the winds of winter. Like, literally, they were doing pie charts on the winds of Like, okay, this is how winds of winter is not going to fit in winds of winter. Like, they're saying that this book, based on all the pending story threads, cannot fit in that one book. It has to be basically two books. Yeah. I'm really excited about your goal evolved. What? What happened? M my Skrulp evolved into Dragology. I'm very excited. Nice. And now it has the highest special defense on my team at 179. Yeah, how is the dynamic with Pokemon going? Like, I like I've I'm so behind. Like, um, what's what's? I mean, I haven't played a main game in a long time, if I'm being honest. So this fan game is kind of my main interface with the Pokemon community at the time. So, I maybe don't have the, the best uh, or most informed opinion. I know that the most recent game, um, Sun and Moon, or Ultra Sun and Moon or whatever, um, a lot of the mm -hmm. Pokemon fans did not like it for a number of reasons. Um, okay. A lot of it being that like the game was just too easy, like too hand-holdy. And it's super linear. So, yeah, very linear um, was another complaint from so, it. It would be safe to say it was like made for casuals then? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they also didn't even... They, they also, um... You can't get every Pokemon in that game, either. Hmm. Wait, so how many Pokemon... What's the number now? Oh, it's thousands. Oh, Jesus. My God. I'm yeah, really I... Behind. I I'm, I don't know all of them. I, I routinely run into Pokemon now that I don't know it all. You know, I, I have to admit, like, ever since I, I came back together with you and Fistro, I felt like I was just kept in a time capsule, because I'm so behind. A lot of things. You know, I, I, I mean, in you know, in your defense, you did like you know, join a you know, kind of started your profession. So it's not like you were doing absolutely nothing for the last you know ten years or whatever it's been. <laughs> like you did kind of like get a job and you know, used your your yeah. inborn skill that you've developed to you know, to to do a professionalism. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's, it's pretty nuts. I gotta like maximize it because I'm I'm getting old and it's kind of getting nuts. So I need to really build the site, you know. And then I was considering switching my career to um, web development because I do know how to do it, but it's not my love. But screw that. I mean, I think that it's it's important that you're doing something that you actually enjoy to do. 
like granted this is coming from the perspective of somebody who you know doesn't have a lot of money or, or anything like that but for me personally like i i could be an accountant i would hate every minute of it but i could do it mm. the, the skills are that that are required to do that job effectively are, are not outside of what i'm able to do yeah oh yeah definitely actually i don't think i ever asked you the question what did you want it to be if i if you don't mind me asking that question well i still want to um go back and do teaching um oh, okay so that's still like the game plan at some point, but right well, now I'm teaching is a lot of fun. I do have a passion for teaching as well, but I couldn't make it work with my current ambitions. You know, it was it was a very hard thing to connect. Yeah, I mean it's different. With. Like I think that like it's really important to know kind of what your what your end game is and if it's something that you really enjoy. Like for me, I really I enjoy like doing now. the thing. That word is so cool. What? Mm, okay. No, end game. I just, I just like that phrase now. <laughs> oh. It's like, it's, it's exactly well, what cause it like, is. cause like, if you want to do, like, for me, something that appeals to me is the stability of the job, or at least perceived, uh, perceived stability of the job. It's not mm -hmm. like super likely that teaching is going to go away as a career in its entirety at any point in time. Um. So for me, like, that's you know that you know. It's, Stable hours, things like that. Um, granted, it's a lot of hours for unpaid work, but my hope is that, you know, in the future, things will get better for people in the teaching profession so that they can get compensated something closer to what they're actually worth. I, I do hope I, I do hope so, because, like, like, there were, like, two teachers that had a profound effect in my life that really pushed me into the person that I am. It was Miss Weiss, um, and, um, and his name was very peculiar. It was a very... Um, it was, this was all in New York. It was very um, But those two teachers, they really, really made me love the whole element of games and like creative writing and thinking. Um, what subject matter would you be interested in like teaching? Um, probably STEM classes. Or STEM classes, rather. Like, you know, science, math, something like that. Mm, the good stuff. Yeah, it's just, it's a more competitive job market Understood. not a lot of math majors as you might imagine <laughs> well, you know, math yeah, as I, get, as I get older tooth. what's up as I get older, oh, very nice oh as I get older math math is less of a of, of a pain I mean, what do you know? You know, using it for you know years and years on end, eventually you'll get better at some of the stuff. Oh, <laughs> wait, hold on. Let me let me. See. I have puppies. Let me check what they're doing real quick. Jeez, that hurt. Jack, can you get off that chair, please? Come on, dude. Sorry, I know where you've been. <laughs> hey, Lily, don't, 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 don't do that. What kind of dogs do you have? Oh, hey guys, yeah. Uh, I just, I just let the dogs in. That's it. What kind do you have? You know, that's a very good question. I don't know. I'm not. I'm horrible with breeds. But they're small dogs. They're not big dogs. And one of them is really, really smart. He looks at me like a person. It kind of freaks me out sometimes. Hmm. So he looks like he's trying to talk to me. Long hair or short hair? Short hair. Um, they are they were bred to chase after rabbits. Okay, is it like a Jack Russell? It might be. Um, he is short hair, short ears, short tail, and they're and he's compact and tiny, but is, not like is the tail docked? Yes, the tail. Well, yeah, the tail is docked. Yes. Okay. What's the coloration like? Uh, actually, maybe I could just take a picture and just uh, submit it to you. Yeah, you could just yeah. send it on Discord. Probably yeah, easier. I, I, I keep forgetting I'm on Discord. Technology, baby. Hey, it's Jack. incredible. Jack, come over here. Where are you? 
If you have a Jack Russell named Jack, I'm going to be very amused. Hey, Jack, look at me. Hey, Joe. Oh, God. He's like the ringleader. What a dream. What about you, Owen? You, do you have any dogs? Uh, yeah, my wife and I, we have a dog, Cocker Spaniel. Oh, sweet. Badass. She's a good dog, even though I like to. She she has some quirks. <laughs> the best ones do. No, I. I'm, I'm, I'm such a dog person. A flickering, <laughs> flickering light bulb. That's what my wife said. <laughs> it's, the light's not always on. It it it, it flickers in and out. Hey, Jack, say cheese. Her eyes okay, look in two yeah. different directions sometimes. <laughs> Does your dog know crunch? Uh, I mean, she likes to crunch her treats, so... Um, she likes to play with her food. I think, hold on. Well, he, excuse me, he, I have a... It's a new... <laughs> Let's see it. Yeah, this foot is... This, yeah, this foot is so awesome. It is incredibly convenient. Excuse me. Yes, it is. I'll, I prefer it um, over uh, Zoom. Yeah, I mean, Zoom's alright. Um, I've also used vMix as well, which is pretty good. Oh, really? Oh, how, um, um, how's that? Um, pretty good. I like it a lot. I mean, it, it, it's a different kind of um, software, right? Like, it's just strict video calls, but it's solid. Let me ask. Liz, do you know what kind of dog that is? Do you know what kind of dog this is? It's not a potato. <laughs> oh no, Jack, you're a potato. <laughs> What's it? Get up. I'm looking at it. Well, I can't move the screen closer to you. Here you go. I sent at least three pictures. All right. Jack. Oh, you Jack. Do you like? Oh, it's definitely oh. a Yorkie. Yorkie. Definitely a Yorkie. Okay. Yorkie mix okay. maybe. Yeah. yeah. It definitely has Yorkie. Yeah. So has the markings. There's the. Yeah, the Yorkie has it. So it has Yorkie coloration, but it might be like a Yorkie. Maybe Yorkie Chihuahua. Probably. But the, the only thing I know about is that uh, they were bred to hunt rats and um, rabbits. Do you know if the if yours is a purebred dog or or is it a mix? Oh, um, that one is definitely a purebred. It's definitely purebred of some. It's a purebred, but I don't know what breed is purebred. Oh. I'm being I'm being told there's apparently DNA testing for dogs. If you're really curious. Yes. 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 That. This dog in particular was the only special dog. Like it was like from a breeder of some sort, and it just came with. It was all fancy smancy from what I've heard. The other dogs are just breeds. I mean mutts. Excuse me. Nothing wrong with those. I don't know if that's a derogatory word. For uh, only if you use it against people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like my my mother has a has a mixed breed dog. Um, yeah, well, when she when she got it, it was a, he was a puppy, and he looked like a Labrador puppy, and then he just kept getting bigger, and then she found out that it wasn't just a Labrador; it was a Labrador Great Dane. <laughs> oh man! Like, and now it's like ninety dogs... pounds. <laughs> oh god, those dogs are huge. I mean, her my mom's dog is what like like when when he's just standing like up on all fours. No, no, like when he's just standing on all fours. Oh, all fours, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he's probably what, like three feet. Well, I was just thinking three and a half. Big dog. My God. So, like, no, he's bigger than Caleb by a lot. Anyway, suffice it to say, he's huge. <laughs> 
Yeah, those dogs are really nice to, nice to look at. Yeah. The problem is that he doesn't realize that he's, like, the size of a horse. Oh, God. Like, when they try, when they jump on you, especially if they... Yeah. Like, when he jumps on, like, his hind legs or whatever, <laughs> would any of you do something like Ancestry.com? Um, I know that... I know that... That, um... My wife has wanted to, to do that. I'm... I, I could be convinced to do it, but I'm a little bit more... Um... What? What, do um, Ancestry.com on yourself? Yeah. Like, it's not that I have, like, an objection against doing it. I just... I want to say it's like I don't care. You just don't want to know? No, it's like it, it doesn't really impact me. Like, I I don't know how my life is, is improved or made worse by knowing genetically where I come from. Well, I, I, was, I was curious to know where I genetically come from. Well, I do know where, where my parents came from. Yeah. So did you um did you do something like that, Hans? Um, uh, no, no, I did not. But I do know my my aunt's, my well my parents came from Haiti. So mm -hmm. and this, this yeah and all and so and 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 the African well the Haitian came from part of Africa like um well um. Mostly all the most okay, it's like the slave trade, right? So yeah. Most of the Africans came from West Africa, but Haitians came from a certain part of Africa. So it's a whole different stock, and it was like uh, Senegal. Like it was a, it was like only like only like a, like a handful of places. So from the typical stock that West Africa, the Africa the Africans from West Africa are, so we're, we're different. They have a particular look to us. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh come but on! I'm curious to know what, what the part of what, what the the exact region of Africa we came from, because that that would help a lot. Yeah, I mean, like I have some vague ideas on where I'm where I'm from already, but it's just like. Like, it's a couple things for me. Like, one thing is, like, I am somewhat concerned about just, like, having my DNA out there. Which I know is going to make me sound crazy. It's going to make me sound crazy, no, but, no. like, you can't predict what technologies are going to exist in the future. And, uh, you know, there is some concern that, you know, something malicious can be done with your DNA if it's just sitting in a database somewhere. No, no, that's true. You're just being concerned and being careful and just being cautious. Yeah, they could, they could do anything. Yes. I had, a, I had a friend who was, a, who was afraid of being cloned. I mean, I don't know that being cloned is like a realistic thing that might happen, but... Same here. But man, if I had the technology or the money, I would try. I would try to clone. Just to see if I could do it. <laughs> do not make me a billionaire, Owen. I, <laughs> I, I would do the most craziest... I'm gonna be honest, I, I just wanna know. I would really do the most craziest thing just to figure out if, if that could actually happen. You know? Yeah, I guess we're, we're fortunate that you are not Jeff Bezos in that yeah, respect. Cause, yeah, because, like, I understand Bezos. Like, I, I would do that. I, would, I don't. I would make a robo suit. That man is evil. <laughs> like, why not? Why not make a robo suit for yourself? Like, if you have all that money, make it. Just or, you know, just, like, it. feed the poor. You know, something productive with his with his money. I think, I think, uh, see, that, that solution is such a quagmire because it technically can be done, but why can't it? <laughs> that's the, it's because they don't want to partake in it because technically we, we produce enough food to do just that. You know, I think yeah, but the reason that the logistics of it, the logistics have nothing can't to do agree with it. On. The logistics have nothing to do with it. I, this, this is strictly just a capitalism thing. <laughs> Well, that's what I'm. That's what I'm referring to. Like, I think it's because people, the logistics of it, people don't agree with how to distribute all this bountiful food that we have. No, the the issue is that um, you have a small number of people hoarding the wealth for that. Uh, you know, so that way. Uh, I don't know. I I, I can't bring right now, but. 
well, suffice yeah, it to, suffice it to say, you know, with the appropriate resources, it's not a matter of you know the logistics of getting the food to the people who need it. It's a matter of um, making the food affordable so that way people can afford it. Well, well, that's one. Well, that's that's one thing I'm saying. Like they just can't agree on how to do it. Like they just they, they well, everyone has an opinion on how they want to do this. I don't even think they're even having this discussion. To be quite honest, I don't. No, they're not. Like I was going to say, like one of the things is like. I, I would not say that, that people don't agree. I think that implies that there's a discussion that's being had when there isn't one. I think the people who are in power don't actually care. You know, well, I agree with you with that. I don't think they do. It's not even that they don't care. It's that they actively want it not to be the case. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, it is true. Yeah. Most people live lives so different than the average person. I don't even think they even could even relate because they're just in their bubble. They cannot. <laughs> it's like that, you know, famous, uh, famous quote, right? Like, let the meat cake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she fucked up with that. <laughs> I think they found her in like, like, like. Uh, wait, hold on. This, uh, let the meat cake. What happened to that woman that said that? I have to imagine she was executed. Yes, I I, I would agree. Because <laughs> that was a French, um, wasn't that a French dictator? Not dictator, a French like, uh, um, royalty. Princess or whatever. Yeah, she was royalty. Like she was basically in her own, um, like. Look, well, really well. There's not much money in feeding the poor, especially if your initials are M M. <laughs> and you're super old and rich. What the, what, what, yeah, let them eat cake. Oh. <sighs> Margit LeBron spoke. Oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Bob, did you see that? Te did you see that uh, text message I had sent you earlier? By the way. Um, which one? The, the one I had sent you about the uh, French boyfriend. Um, yes, that was great. Uh, I'll, I'll share um, the, the gist of it with the stream, but basically someone's like, oh, I was... It was, hmm? it was Marie Antoinette that said that. Well, oh. well, that was first attributed to that. That phrase was first attributed to. That's interesting. Yep. I think she got executed anyway, well, although she wasn't French, so... Yeah. Probably did. In those days, people were killing people for yeah revolution was serious back then yeah right. so super serious so the joke is a, a tweet that i had seen earlier um but the, the gist of it was you know i was at the you know the, the person who was tweeting says they were at the liberty museum with their boyfriend and the tour guide said that uh, the u.s is the most was the most successful at overthrowing a uh overthrowing a you know royal dictator or whatever <laughs> and apparently her French boyfriend said, you know, spent the rest of the tour mumbling, I don't see any guillotines. Exactly. I think it's very apt. The French knew what they were doing. Yeah. They're so good at revolutions, they won ours. <laughs> <laughs> man, that cuts deep, man. That cuts real deep. Yeah, That's yeah, true. they... they... Yeah, they really came through for us. Like they came in the clutch, you know. It's true. Like hard carry. <laughs> yeah, all, all, all to basically, you know, um, smack Britain in the face. And we stuck him with the bill. Yeah. They should have known early on that you know things weren't going to go very well. And basically, the first thing we did was opt not to pay them so that we didn't bankrupt the country. Yeah, we did a lot of OP, uh, OP moves, you know, setting up America. Like, the Founding Fathers were, you know, with all their faults, they were OG. They were bad. You know. Shoot, they created a... Not, not a fan of not a fan of the Founding Fathers. Well, yeah, like I said, they have their faults, but, you know, I gotta give it, I gotta give it to them. They... Shoot, when they... Shoot, they really stood... <laughs> Dude, like, they was getting bullied. They're like, okay, fuck that. We're going to make a country. 
I think the thing that that really like changed my I won't say like changed my opinion, but like helped me put the founding fathers back into um, perspective was um, the way that George Washington treated his slaves. Um, mm-hmm. In that, um, oh yeah. Well, in case anybody who's listening you know doesn't know, um, back in the day. Wait, are we still live? Clay? Oh yeah. That never turned off. Oh, I said a couple. Of... Oh, okay, cool, cool. Just making sure. So I was, about, um, I was about to let loose. Yeah. So one thing that you know people may not be aware of is you know back in the day Virginia used to have a, a law that was in place where if a slave entered the state of Virginia. Um, they were freed automatically through state law, I think, in like 50 days or something. And mm-hmm. so what George Washington would do with his um, staff is he would have them basically stay in Virginia for 49 days and then leave the state, thereby resetting the time frame so that he could keep them enslaved. Mm. And he would rotate staff basically on a 49-day intervals in order to ensure that none of them were ever freed. It's a pretty terrible thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah actually a piece of trash yeah also just like there's just like a lot of like weird like mythos around the founding fathers that is just not true oh no i I understand you know it's it's like a good there there's 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 good and and there's bad you know i understand that yeah it's like the root of nationalism it's just, just human. It's just being human. Like we're, there's good and there's bad. <laughs> I agree. Mitch McConnell's not a, not a person that I would shed any tears for. Were he to get sick. <laughs> yeah. Or impaled with a rusty spike. Oh him, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or yeah, choke he, he on uh, disposable plastics. <laughs> Are you saying that because he's a turtle? There he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he yeah he looks like every like he looks like he's scared every time he gets out. They probably have to have his aides remove all plastic bags from the office so that he doesn't eat them by mistake. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mitch McConnell. Heaven forbid any of his aides ever go to a Seven <laughs> Eleven. I don't understand that one. Like, I don't I don't even go to Seven Eleven. They have plastic bags. Oh, okay. Mitch McConnell is turtly enough for the Turtle Club. I don't know about that, man. Uh, Fitz was chatting. <laughs> I, mean, not I think he is. He's turtly enough for the Turtle Club. He's the vice president. And he's calling his father. Mitch McConnell was definitely the kid who like would tell on people when in school. Oh, the teacher's cut, the title tell. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm curious to see what it looks like when he was young. He, he probably was like a stud back in the day, you know. Let's, let's, let's Please do not invite <laughs> <laughs> that comparison. He was, he, he was probably swinging. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm still straight. It's still streaming. Isn't he like a hundred years old? Like, <laughs> like he was probably a master stud. Let me let, let me look him up. <laughs> You'll have to find a picture from like the 1930s or something when he was. I, I'm sorry, like, I, I, forgive me if I'm being me, but, like, certain people are like, oh my God, <laughs> Fitz says he they... wasn't to look at his Wikipedia page. There you go. Like, I'm like, I'm like thinking, like, oh my God, how did, how did these people find love? I, well, they don't. You know, it's like. They find someone who's willing to put up God. with them. Oh, that's so sad. He's a sad individual. Oh, He's a sad individual who wishes oh, wow. to inflict the, the pain that he feels onto other people. Yeah, Connell Young does not that impressive. So are we going to take the over-under on whether or not Biden's going to make it to the end of his term? Just on sheer health. Oh, you know what? a good question I, I i was like shoving that thought in my brain i didn't want to consider it because 
we're in a global pandemic, you know, and he's in the particular age group. I mean, he got vaccinated. He was probably, like, the first person who was vaccinated. Okay, that's good to know. Him and his wife. Oh. But oh. I'm just saying, like, he's just, he's quite old, so, like, yes, I think it's not a not 0% Wait, chance. Isn't it true that he is one of our... The he is the oldest president. president. Oh, oh, wow, that's crazy. Boy, is that a... Yeah. I mean, Trump would have been, too. They're the same age, basically. 78. He only basically has... Well, actually, the moment, after you pass 60, it's, any, it's anybody's guess how, how long you live, basically. I mean, people have been turned into red pizza with, you know, with less years under their belt. Yeah, because people usually kind of die early, kind of die around their 50s and 60s, usually. Well, the thing is that the thing is that only the good die young, so I think he's pretty much locked for like a hundred and three. Yeah. So he's seventy. If Billy Joel is to be believed. So he's so he's upper class. He, um. So he has good health care, I would assume. I mean, the best the money can buy, especially now that he's president elect. Yeah, and he's probably active. Because now he has the best that my money can buy <laughs> through now, the, the tax. Only thing that might, the only thing that might get him is the stress of being president. Because well. See, I don't know how stressful vice president is, how, how stressful that job is, so I can't... Not I very. Know. I can't imagine I that it is. Yeah, um... So he's... Oh my god, he's 78, Jesus. So, golly. Yep. He's gonna be 80. Oh. Dear lord. Nancy Pelosi... Oh god, they're all so old. Nancy Pelosi needs to, like, crawl back into the grave that she came out of. Yeah, he was playing really dirty political games that I did not like. Whatever. She did, I, I, whatever. You know, like, God, like, she Yeah, I guess this is the part of the stream where I let everyone know that, you know, <laughs> where I stand on the political spectrum. I try not to, to talk politics too, too much on the stream, but, uh, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there, like, is there, like, something against, like, that on Twitch? I don't, I don't know. Yet no, I don't think so. As long as you're not actively spreading misinformation, I think it's fine. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah. Although, to be honest, I haven't looked, so maybe there is. Who knows? Hmm. But, I mean, uh, but AOC was allowed to stream Among Us, and she definitely talked politics while she was playing, so... Uh, it was an interesting year for politics, I'll tell you that. It was... <laughs> there were some people pissing their pants on election night. <laughs> a lot of people, I think. Oh, they were, like, pissing their pants, like, oh, no! <laughs> it was hilarious. I'm sorry, I took a lot of pleasure in that. Um, you know, because, oh my god. I mean, we're not technically out of the woods yet. <laughs> yes, straight to, oh my god, so many things that happened. Oh god, like, <laughs> uh, this is. I just hope that we make it to the 20th with little incident. That's all I want. Uh, 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 nah, it's gonna be drama. I'm counting on it. It's gonna be yeah, I, I know there will be drama. I just hope that it's inconsequential. That's all. Oh, I think it's gonna mark twenty. Twenty is gonna be the thing that's gonna be marking like that's like when it happens. You're gonna be like, okay, twenty one just started, and you're gonna be like, oh damn. Like, oh, hopefully not. Like, I, like I'm, I'm fine. Like, I got, I got war torn in twenty twenty, so I'm, I'm ready for any craziness happen. I'm ready for a full blown. You know, political disaster. Well, hopefully, we'll have people see the, seize the means of production and go on general strike. <laughs> hopefully, I really do want that. Oh, yeah, because yeah, because I'm in California, so everything is pretty much um, slow on, and on yeah. fire. You forgot the on fire part. Oh yeah, on fire. But where I'm located, I barely even notice it. You know, but yeah, on fire a lot. Uh, the homeless issue is pretty evident, but where I'm living in, I don't see it either. I live in a pretty, I, I'm pretty much in an easy mode area. Like, I pretty much don't even feel it. Hey, guys, I'm, I'm with my dog. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, California is annoying right now. It's very annoying. I was never a fan. I like California, you know. That's why I moved there, you know, because I, I I couldn't I couldn't do 
I had enough of Florida, and I wanted to try something new, so I went to California. It was it was good. I had no problem with it. I think that that it was definitely a good move. I, I just, for me personally, I don't like L.A. <laughs> yes, I understand. Yeah, I don't care for L.A. either. Um, but you know, the California weather fits my temperament. I don't like the cold, and I don't I don't care for humidity. I'll I'll, I'll tolerate it. I'm fine. I'll live anywhere. I don't care. I'm not too picky. Yeah, I mean, I just I just moved back to Florida from Vegas not that that long ago. Oh, oh yeah. How's um? Oh man, you must. So you're living in Vegas right now? No, no, I, I moved back. Excuse me. I moved back from Vegas. I'm I'm in oh. Florida again. I was oh, there for okay. yeah. I was in Vegas for like five years though. Oh wow. Because yeah, because uh yeah, they're being swamped by Californians. Like Californians. Are oh yeah, we're well aware. <laughs> yeah. Like, like we're Arizona, well aware where the Californians are going. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, Arizona, Nevada, Texas definitely is getting. A they lot mucked up. Of they mucked up their own state, and now they're coming over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's not not enough moving. to ruin your own housing market. You have to ruin the ones next door as well. Well 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 here's a secret. Most of the ones that are moving are that are could afford oh, well. to move, they're the conservatives. Mostly it's the conservatives that are moving out because they could afford to do it. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> it's basically, it's basically conservatives and rich liberals moving. Fitz is such a troll. <laughs> It's like, what are you talking about? Trump's still going to be president this year. It's like, come on, guy. <laughs> you know what? Oh, man. I wonder what he's going to do if he tries to do that. He's probably going to say, I am I am the Senate or something like that. Something. I didn't think it was possible, but, like, thank God Mike Pence has a fucking conscience. It's it's buried in there somewhere, but, like, apparently he has one. <laughs> no, like, well, I, he seems like a decent guy. Oh, no, he's know. definitely not. He, he's a terrible well, homophobe, uh, but... Uh, I don't, I don't know what the, I can never win when it comes to, because like, like politicians are pretty much so, oh, they're so filled in their own filth. It's better just not to touch them. Well, I'm just saying that like, thank, thank God for whatever reason, Mike Pence decided that not trying to, you know, go with a coup is, is the right thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did, it, did, did, did the Senate uh, vote or whatever already? Yeah, that was like a week ago, I think. But I think that um, they tried to file a lawsuit. Um, a bunch of Republicans tried to file a lawsuit or whatever, and they wanted to like basically like to like have Mike Pence make the final decision on on the voters or whatever. And he's like, "I'm not going along with this." <laughs> like, <laughs> are you guys nuts? Like, thank God. But yeah. <laughs> It's been crazy. Just gotta keep stomping these birds. <laughs> I can't win. Like, okay, so he's, he's decent enough to at least not like set off like the. Mo okay. Oh my god. Like, no, I guess no one is decent. Uh, I mean, I think it's important to know a little bit about the person's character before you before attributing things like that both on either side of the aisle like i know that i am just clowning on the trump administration a little bit but like there's plenty of people who are not great on the on the left side of the aisle as well and i think it's important yeah, to yeah. to kind of there, know there, that there is no one on the left side of the aisle <laughs> well yeah i mean obviously everyone in the democratic party is just kind of you know sent is more center than anything else but Yeah, party over people. That's uh, that's definitely correct. <sighs> this has been a fun little grind fest. So I'm keeping this Everstone on this Ponyta so I can get it to level 55. Because um, at 55, I think it learns Flare Blitz. But if I evolve it into a Rapidash, then it doesn't learn it until 63. And I want it to have Flame Blitz for the gym battle. What time is it? Yeah, probably like three, four minutes. I'll probably call it quits in a bit. 
Yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna feed my doggies. Yeah, they they're probably wondering why they haven't received any food yet. Oh no, like they this I spoiled them. They're super spoiled. You know, they know very well I fed them, but you know they've been good, so you know why not? Extra meal, I gotcha. Ah uh, yeah, oh, no, nah, I'm joking. They're the best dogs. Thank you. Cool. I'm such a dog person. All right, let's take stock and see where Pokemon's are. Yeah, because I'm gonna keep it as a ponyta so I can learn to move earlier. So, but once it evolves, it's gonna get a pretty big boost to speed and attack. Um, so we just need to. So Dragolgi is coming along nicely. Um. I think we may end up trying to use this in the battle against the poison rival. Um, uh, maybe not, but like it's an option, certainly. Um, I feel like Doug Trio is probably pretty good in that in that fight because he's going to start with a muck. So I think starting with Doug Trio is probably going to be a good call. We can use like Earthquake and just try and go through. The one that we really had a hard time with was the um, Nido King last time um, because it was pretty quick. So I. Don't think that uh, Lunatone's gonna outspeed the, N the Nido King necessarily, but its stats are okay. I I'm I'm gonna try and hope that you know one of the other Pokemon can outspeed it. Um, but yeah, we should make this Discord into like Comic Connection on Discord. I thought that was kind of your intention when you made it. Yes, yes, it was. I just so. didn't know how to take it from there, because it was like, I was still new to Discord. Yeah, well, I mean, now you have the skill set to do it. Oh, oh, God, oh, goodness, yes. You would just need to find the Discord handles, I guess, of the various people. Yeah, and then I need to give power to key select people, you know, protect my power base. Power to the players. Actually, I don't, actually, I wouldn't want complete power. I, I want, like, of peers, really. I think that would be the best way to do it. No, consolidate your power. Keep it at one place. <laughs> um, Once you start to, to divvy up the power, that's when you open yourself uh, up to potential betrayals. Mm, yeah. true. Actually, that makes me want to play... Um, what game is it called? Of Thrones. Is it no, it's, it's not. It's it's a political game. I think it's Civs, or is it? No, no. I think it's um. Sorry, it's it's a game I was really interested in playing. Secret it's Hitler. Not, no. Among game, Us. No games. Like Civilization. I almost, I really want to catch this Togedemaru just because of the. Oh, I have to get some more Pokeballs. Nice. Uh, yeah, let's nickname it. So, let's see. Riddick, come to the rescue. Oh, I think it's called uh, Crusader King. I've never heard of that game before in my life. Oh no, I think it's uh, Europa. I think it's Europa I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's a, I think that's Rise of Kingdoms. You could, like, yeah. you could like like assassinate your brother or something and then like consolidate power. I like those types of games where you're like like planning on conquering a nation and stuff like that with diplomacy. Hmm. Doesn't ring a bell, to be honest, but it sounds cool. Yeah, it's a super, <laughs> it's super niche. It's like, hmm. I think, um, yeah. I was uh, well, looking on, um, I was looking on a roll twenty the other day, by the way. Uh, Bob and Hans too. Um, so I've apparently logged over three hundred hours on roll twenty now. Jeez. Oh. Adds um, up. 
Wait, um, in, 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 in where? Roll 20 for Dungeons & Dragons online. Oh, wow. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, I've played a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a fun game. It is. I still have to finish some work on a dungeon that I'm going to be running on Saturday. If my players are watching this, I want them to know that I'm not actively trying to kill them, but if they die, they die. Do you YouTube that as well, or are you like, it's like, because that seems like a pretty interesting concept, like. So I, so I don't stream my Saturday game, that's just a personal game that I run. Um, mm -hmm. However, I do play as a player in a Monday game, and uh, that is on twitch.tv forward slash near future industries. I guess I'll put the link for that in the description. Um, yeah, yeah, I like to see how you, um, um, you know, run, run a campaign. Well, in that game, I'm playing as a player. Um, I play oh, okay. as a uh, as a necromancer, and my uh, <laughs> friend Tracy runs the game, and he's oh, been awesome. really fun. Uh, so we we're level nine. We're about to start a new plot arc. Actually, um, we're being called back to Neverwinter after you know nine levels uh, doing heroic stuff. So I think it smells fishy, but. You know, it's a plot hook, so I'm not going to not take advantage of it. Okay. Um, um, returning another thread, I kind of, like, let die. I figured out the name of the game I was talking about. It's, mm -hmm. I think it's pronounced Europa. Yeah, it's a super complex game. It's like Civs, but it's way more complex in its engine and, like, like diplomacy and all that. It's, like, it's, oh, my God, it's so, so hmm. detailed. I'll have to look into it. Yes. <laughs> Is it for PC? I, yes, yes. It, well, yes. Uh, to my knowledge, it's just for PC. Because the way it's designed, it's, it screams PC. Hmm. I'll send you a link. Because, yeah. Cause I, 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 I'm, like, these type of games, I, like, I get excited for. I love these types of games. Because I just want to spend hours, you know, conquering... A nation with diplomacy. I think I'm gonna get rid of low kick. Just because low kick, like it, it varies so much in power, and I'm gonna get flare blitz instead. Nice. Now I can take the Everstone off of this thing. And. And I'll give the experience share to Ponyta. Nice. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll get one more level on Ponyta. We'll get that uh, that evolution to Rapidash, and then we'll probably call it a night. Oh, Rise of Kingdom. That's another good one, actually. Yeah. Good. 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 Good point. Yeah. I was. I was also thinking about that one too. Let me see. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. No, that's another game I was thinking about too. That that one is fun, but it's 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 more streamlined. But that's that's also a good one too. Yeah, I was thinking this Thursday I may end up um doing a stream with uh with a uh, Marvin mm. and uh doing just like a D&D like just talking D and D for a bit, like just just talking, not necessarily gaming or anything. Hmm. So I'll definitely let, keep you guys posted if I do that. I'll probably post it on like Facebook or something as well, or as well as Twitter. Yeah, I kind of I kind of stayed away from Facebook for good for good. <laughs> oh my god, it was such a it was it was becoming a boomer platform. It, it is. It's definitely a, a lot, a lot more. Older people, I think, are on there nowadays. Uh, the, a lot of the younger generations kind of migrated to Twitter, I think. Yeah, Twitter and Instagram, and then TikTok. That's all. I'm gonna have to look into that. Uh, oh, place. Tick TikTok. I'm I'm too old for TikTok. I don't understand it. Oh man, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna learn that thing. Tips to the young cats. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I study that thing like a science. <laughs> Well, if you learn it, let me know because I don't know anything about it. Well, it's 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 
Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. I, I'm just doing it because it, it seems like a necessity. Because if I don't update myself with technology, I'm going to be out competed. So I need to keep keep myself up to it. Yeah, Hans, do you take commissions? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I do take commissions. Um, since you were featured in my video, do you want to send me your commission information so I can post a link to it in my video description? Oh, uh, yes, yes, uh, um, darn it, because, yeah, I have to create, so how would that be done? Is it, like, uh... I mean, if you just have, like, an email that you want people to reach out to you by, um, oh, if they're yeah, seeking yeah. that, yes. or, yes, like, I if you have a website it. with, like, prices listed out, uh, you know, or if you're just, you know, open for professional projects. I'm always open. You know, given that you're one of my, you know, most talented art friends. Oh, thank you. Oh, I appreciate that. I'm always working to get better. I always think it's a, kind of a weird thing to say to an artist, like, oh, you're so talented. It really, like, in some ways it feels like it undercuts the the hard work that goes into becoming a, a, a working artist. I don't know um, if maybe... A lot of artists would, uh, a lot of artists would kind of feel weirded about it, but I don't, because I have confidence i'm like i'm just like great thank you i appreciate it because i know where you're coming from so i'm like yeah i think like I like clearly the intent is the compliment right but it always just struck me as kind of weird that like with with like um artistic endeavors uh yeah. such as like art or music things like that people will say like oh you're so talented when like it really kind of like is not about that <laughs> it's about the hard work yeah but like a lot of hard work goes into it yeah but I, I feel fun because I understand what they mean. So I, I take I take the end, like what they're trying to say. So I take that. Um, I, like I have a weird yeah, relationship it, with other artists because like they get super weird when you like say, oh, your art is really good. And they, and they get to the like they like a lot of artists have this weird like mental like a model in their brain. Like, oh, if I think I'm good at art, I actually suck. And I'm like, no, 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 it doesn't. You could appreciate how you are currently, but yet you can acknowledge that there is still room to grow. That's a that's a much more healthy, you know, mindset to have than constantly thinking that you suck and you need to improve. I'm yeah. Like, oh God, like they, they they could look like 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 play a fiddle. Like I could care. Oh my God, this noise would definitely do that. I, I think that it's it. Like, I think a lot of that just comes down to self-esteem as well. Like, I think once you have the self-esteem, it goes a really long way towards, um... Yeah. Toward, towards making that kind of an easier process. Because yeah. I think that, like, being self-critical is one of the hardest things for people to be. Right? Because, like, it, there's a really fine line that you walk between being, um... Like... Like, you want to give yourself constructive feedback. You don't want to just come down, like, negatively on yourself all the time. Yeah. But it's important to always look at the decisions that you're making and look back and say, was this the best decision that I could have made? And if not, that doesn't mean that, you know, that you're dumb or that, you know, you should feel bad about it. Um, or if you look at your art and say, OK, this art is not where I want it to be. I think that you need to have a really healthy relationship with the way that you critique yourself. Otherwise, you can really end up spiraling in a way that's not very healthy. Oh, yes. I, I, I Yeah, I agree. Yeah. They, the, a lot of artists are really bad with that and they really need to work on it because it's just like like at the end of the day we're all gonna die right so what's I mean, the point, I don't know about what's that. The point? <laughs> not 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 if uh, bob has anything to say about it well actually technically speaking with the technology that we have yeah we could be living for quite some time but you know we're basically mortal beings and there's no point in t torturing yourself like you're gonna grow, you know. You're gonna. Oh my god, it's like. I mean, not to get too philosophical about it, but like technically, by uploading these videos to the internet, it does extend my lifespan. Yeah, because we technically are alive. Because you know, people like people won't know that you're gone once they see your video. They say, "Oh, you guys, really uploads more." I mean, the like 16 or 17 year old me is still exists on Shin Fitz's YouTube channel. Like, <laughs> if you want to watch those old videos, I will forever be that you know naive teenager <laughs> you know yes and um yeah like my mindset is different when it comes to the art because like i know that where i started is not the best version of me but i know if i'm persistent and i'm c consistently focused on being better at my craft and i'm studying and I'm being diligent i will be better than i was a week ago 
but I don't hate my art. I, I look at it and say, okay, it's, it's good. It could be better, and I'm going to make it better. And I enjoy the process. I don't kill myself over my drawing. Like, I know people that will literally just have, like, oh, my God. They'll go into deep depression yeah. over their work. And it's like it's a masterpiece. Yeah, I mean, not to, not to undersell depression. I mean, that's something that, you know, is very serious. You can't just will that away as much as we would like it to be the case. But um, I'm, 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 okay I, I'm gonna that. I'm gonna put they're, a pin in that for now though, um, just because I am gonna close up the stream for the night. So um, just oh, for yeah. anyway. Oh, yeah, we'll get <laughs> so let me just let me just wrap that up really quick. Um, so you know, guys, thank you so much for watching and tuning in. I'm gonna close up the stream for the evening. Um, if you're on Twitch, uh, you can catch the the uh, videos later on on YouTube <laughs> forward slash Flat Beaver. Um, if you're on YouTube, you can catch the live broadcast on Twitch forward slash Vlad Beaver, um, or follow me on socials for at Vlad Beaver. Uh, I'll put all the links in the descriptions. Um, Hans, thanks for, so much for chilling with us. Uh, Jinfitz, I'll put your uh, your uh, link to your Twitch stream as well in there. And uh, Bob, if there's anything that you want to plug, just send it over to me, and I'll put it in the description as well. <laughs> I'm going to be so bad for streaming because I'm like so on the edge of, of like getting you banned I must be like no I don't think so I, I think about to... okay all right well anyways uh, anyone you have a great night and uh I'll catch you yeah, all later you too, man. <laughs> have a good one. Bye. I have a good one